If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this legendary episode legendary. Oh my of goodness. Mind Pump. This Happy is our first monumental 800th episode. This is, yes. Happy 800. Hey, boys we did it Woo! confetti what does that even Woo! mean right? i don't know what i have it? no idea i've seen people celebrating all their like numbers like that and i'm like what is this it's mean? been three is it three uh, doug what was it was this three years three and a half years what are we at now three and a half years three and a half years how many 800 wait a episodes. second maybe this does mean something someone got their calculator here someone needs to figure out for me what is it? it's it's ten thousand hours before you're considered a master? Oh, we're not a master yet. Well, let's that you got to do ninety. There's ninety minutes probably is the average podcast episode. Yep. So eight hundred yeah. times ninety. Tell us how far away we are from becoming a master. Divide that by uh, how many minutes in an hour? Why am I retired? Why no? It's, <laughs> so it's <laughs> hours. Deeper. It's twelve hundred hours. We long way to go. It. Oh my god! Yeah, twelve hundred hours. Twelve hundred. Are uh, you sure you did the math? A thousand, a thousand, two hundred hours. Yeah, if each if each episode is an hour, it's eight hundred hours. That means we got to go ten times this to become fucking wow. masters. Well, this? it's good yeah. news, bro. That means that yeah, we have a lot, as of, good as, a lot of growing. As good as you think we are, <laughs> Damn. we suck. Um, I thought we were awesome. This is me at sucking. We're, we're not even wow, close. Wow, I'm gonna get really good. <laughs> this is like stage one. Anyway, happy eight hundredth episode, everybody. This episode we. I don't know, we go all over the place. We started about uh, talking about growth that we've experienced from podcasting, the business of podcasting and advertising, uh, things that we've never shared on the show. Uh, Justin shares something very, very personal about his <laughs> sexual preferences. Then yeah. we go to, we talk about like what sets us off, the time Doug almost killed everybody, <laughs> taking action in spite of less than perfect circumstances, the danger of unearned wisdom. Uh, learning how to enjoy the process. We talked about, oh, by the way, one of the greatest things that's ever happened in Mind Pump history happened today on the 800th episode. Justin gave an analogy that made sense. Oh, <laughs> you write that right. down. That is, uh, uh, that is, uh, it made monumental. Only perfect took sense. 800 episodes. Perfect sense. We talk about de- developing a taste for healthy foods, how different training can give your body a different look. Uh, the lack of good programming in the industry. I also talked a lot about map split. I'm following the program myself, and my body seems to be resp- responding looks very, inc- very it well. It looks incredible. It looks incredible. You should see the way Adam's looking at look it right at now. Look at all those veins. Yep. That's, uh, <laughs> don't look down there, please. Uh, map split is available on our site, mindpumpmedia.com, as well as our Maps Anywhere program, which is half off, as well as all of our bundles where we take multiple Maps programs and put them together. That's all at mindpumpmedia.com. Dot com and then we end the show with talking about the future of Mind Pump and before we get into the episode a thank you from uh, the staff here at Mind Pump for being with us this entire time we love yes. you enjoy thank you guys watch the buzzing will be gone ah you son of a bitch there it is yeah you know, I'm in whoa, science whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down. Yo, yo. Oh, science. Oh, oh. let me Just, turn you down right here uh, trying to yeah, make yeah, my good. presence known you know you're you know you're you're in trouble when Sal gives you advice on tech. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, or when Sal speaks in a yeah. third person. That'd be like, the sky is falling. That'd be like me first person. That'd be like me teaching you how to play football or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> be like, wow, I am terrible. That that would be the day. You know, I was tripping on this the other night. I think uh, I'd just give up. And it could have been it could have been uh, cannabis induced. Not sure. Oh. But at one point we all we were all sperms. Yeah. You know what I mean? You that, go back that far enough. That is what you were thinking about last night. Well, trip off that, right? At mm. one Do you think you had a like you were you aware that right. you were a sperm? You looked just like a tadpole. Yeah. Or like tiny. Just fucking swimming. Just... Now, here. here... <laughs> yeah. Kind of sounded like that. What's the nope. sound? <laughs> you just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bet you were. The... Slither your way through. So I think you were probably the sperm that was just fucking bulldozing everything. Oh, yeah. yeah like you were, you were bouncing off. <laughs> I was trying off... like every. It was, I was like hitting walls and yeah. trying to penetrate. Yeah. You were bouncing off the walls. You were fucking kamikaze. But I kept everything. going. I was like pursuing. Yeah. You know, yeah. I made it. Made yeah. it to the home stretch. Adam, Adam was talking to all the other sperms. He's like, listen, guys. He's like, <laughs> follow me. Follow, I'll show yeah, you guys where go to go. Ahead. And then yeah. he would like me, sabotage Yeah, them. let me show you where yeah, to go. they go the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was lost because yeah. I don't ever get, know where I'm going. Yes. But I, it was luck. Like, yeah. everybody went this way. I'm over here. And then, oh, right. I'm lucky. You know what I mean? Anyway, it was a thought. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it that's was a what thought It sounds like a high thought. Dude, do you guys realize what today is? What's today? 800, dude. Eight. Ooh, yeah. Episode 800. 
That's man. a lot, man. Dude, I, I've only known you two for three years, right? A little over three years, right? A little over three. But I feel like we're friends who've been friends for 10 years. Yeah. I, I almost feel guilty about our, our friendship. It's kind of weird. Why do you... Guilty? Well, because Did of... Did you cheat on us? <laughs> well... <laughs> No, I feel guilty. tell us. I yeah. feel guilty because of all my other friends that Talk I've had my it. entire life that I consider like my best friends. Like I may know more about you two motherfuckers than even them. Well, yeah. have you talked to them for over a thousand hours? Well, I, that's just it, right? <laughs> just I know. I mean, imagine if you got maybe to, some true. of them pretty close. I mean, I've spent some some years with a couple. I mean, I got buddies that go all the way back to fourth grade, right? So, I mean, we've we've definitely put some time in. But mm. we've logged some serious time Dude, in a very imagine, short duration. Imagine yeah. if you had some friends, forget that you're podcasting. Imagine if you had some friends and every day, for like Monday through Friday, right? Every day, Monday through Friday, you meet with them and all you guys do is talk. Yeah. Like really talk. For like figure things out for like two hours, yeah, three hours, four hours, personally and to help people. Yeah, dude. You mm. know, that's I was, crazy. Yesterday, I was uh, I spoke for a, a mastermind group for Jills, and it was just all business type questions. And uh, so one of the questions I got asked was about partnerships. Oh, is this when you got all emotional? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> what did I get all emotional? You did. You sent a very, a very, very sentimental. A very oh, nice text. oh, oh, oh. I last should read it. Uh, read it. Uh, Sal, oh, but, last yeah. night. I should read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on front. Me on no, front it was very nice, dude. <laughs> I know. He's, you know what he said. People back. don't. You know what? You're right, Sal. People need to know. Adam is a really nice guy. Yeah, I don't you know. know. I like, think people, people don't know that enough. No, they have no idea. Yeah. They're <laughs> all afraid. They, we always talk about how much of an asshole. Yeah, he is. this was at 9:48 at night, by the way, and it's. Uh, I love you guys. That's how it starts. Mm. Yes. I've never had so much fun building something in my life. It's very nice. Had a moment of appreciation of you three men today while talking about building a business. I feel so blessed to have found you all. And I sent the eggplant emoji. I know. Yeah. I, I was going to do sperm coming out of that, but I had to tie it together. And the, it was funny. It's like when one of us gets sentimental, because at some point all of us do that, <laughs> the, the other two guys have to check on you know, that check. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. have to kind of bring uh, attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened on this? Well, so they, we were talking about, they asked me questions about partnerships and, I, and you know, in the success of Mind Pump and, you know, mm. how do you suggest going about finding a partner? And I said, man, that's a really tough one for me to answer because I've had a lot of partnerships in the past and none of them obviously still exist. And I, I personally don't recommend it to anybody. If you can build something, uh, you know, by yourself as, as the sole owner, CEO of it, obviously, if you're going to build something really big, eventually you'll need people. But as far as partnerships, partnerships yeah. are really fucking tough to well, do. It's like picking a spouse. And we're, you know, for reals, yeah. yeah, it's 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 the odds are definitely against you, bro. It's almost as important, you know, because you, you when you're maybe more. Well, well, I mean, if you have kids, I think maybe we not. we talk to each other and and deal with stuff that's challenging, probably more than a lot of marriages do. Oh too. yeah, that's oh, like, like constantly. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, I could see that. Well, you for think sure. about it. Think yeah. about it. I mean, we are, we're I mean, we are definitely together eight you know hours, sometimes more a day every day. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. your wife goes off to her job, you go off to your job, you see each other from what five p.m. to ten p.m. before you go to bed, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. whatever, and then on weekends, but. I mean, we literally are in the thick of things all the time. And it, with building a business, like raising a, a child or multiple children, I would feel like this is, has to be like, because there's so many different uh, there le is. legs and, to the business. Yeah. And you'll have yeah. differing opinions of how to do it. You'll have different, right. yeah, different and styles. We have, and we have these. You know, I, yeah. and I told them that on this call, I said, you know, even though we have, we've made it work out, I said... You know, I'm really blessed for the partners that I have, and I and it, I really believe that it only would work where we're all at in our lives currently. <laughs> totally. Yeah, because it, it, I just totally. I would have had experience. We're as as massive of egos as everybody has. At the same time, we're also really humble and open minded. So, which sounds really conflicting or contradicting each other. I I just think that it would have never worked uh, any other time in my life or with any other people. So. Although I was sitting here talking about it to these people, I was like, man, I really don't, I don't recommend it. Now, does that mean it's not possible? I said, what happens and what had happened to me in the past is you typically gravitate to people that, you're, that are like you because you're, you're friends with them already mm -hmm. or you like what they're doing or you're both in a similar business and they're successful and you're successful. And so you think the merging of the two of you will create super success. But really what people may not know about my relationship with Justin was what, what, what made us so tight back when he worked with me was he complimented me. 
we were very different. Mm -hmm. We were very different about uh, how we went about, you know, conducting personal training business. And I saw that and I knew that he was a really good complement to my style where my weaknesses were, I felt he had a lot of strengths and vice versa. So, and I feel like Sal found Doug the same similar way. Like, I feel like the relationship that you have established with Doug, yeah, you guys liked each other. Yeah, you were clients, this and that, but a lot of Doug's attributes and strengths within this business are your weaknesses. For sure. Mm -hmm. And Doug, you with you, vice versa. So I think the fact that you guys had kind of already found each other and made it a really strong connection and bond, both relationship wise and business wise, and then Justin and I did too. And then it just so happens to be that, you know, I've got kind of like a little bit of Sal in me, I feel like, and just like Sal probably has. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> just the tip. You know, not right. too much of it. Yeah. <laughs> I could I could I tried not to. I, I looked I at Justin. Yeah, 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 Freudian yeah. slip there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But I, don't you feel like, and I'm looking over at Justin and Doug right now, like Justin and Doug have some some similarities to them, yeah, like, right? Sure. They have some similarities, and then Sal and I have some similarities. But yeah. yet, everybody has a, a very very unique and different yeah. uh, attributes that really contribute to the overall success of business. And you know, we've had many things that have happened within this business where one guy has taken the lead, and the other guy has yeah. just let, let the other guy lead. It's you know? funny you say yeah. that because I was watching uh, like the short. It was like a documentary type thing on uh, SEALs, Navy SEALs, and also these these like mm. super high level military units. And what these these high level military units, it's one of the things that that they learn how to do is they learn how to in any situation somebody will take the lead and everybody else will get behind. And it can be a different person each time depending on the situation. Yeah, it can rotate. Well, they call it, I mean, they, I think they even talk about this in, uh, what's it called? Stealing fire, right? Where mm. it's that flow state where it's unspoken. They know, they get into it and it's mm -hmm. not a problem. It's not a challenge. It's not an ego challenge or whatever. Like they just do it. And that I feel like if you can find that with a partner mm -hmm. where it's, it feels seamless. And part of that I think is you have to be, you have to be confident enough to lead but you also have to be humble enough to follow. Mm -hmm. And it, usually you don't come together. They usually yeah. don't come together. Right. It seems like totally different pursuits. Yes. But, you know, at the same time, what's interesting is I think that we all have such massive vision. And I think that the end goal as far as we're all trying to get to somewhere that um, we all understand as far as like, well, this this is like the pinnacle of helping people and then also being successful and like, you know, thriving, you mm -hmm. know, individually. And to do that is to recognize your weaknesses mm -hmm. and, and, and to see them and see strengths in other people that, you know, um, can carry you even further. Whereas, yes, I can, I can pile all this on top of my back and I've, I can operate like that. It is just not as effective. No. Oh. And there's nothing better than, and I, I, I've told so many people this, there's nothing better than identifying a strength in someone and then just observing and, and watching and learning from that person's, you know, strength or attribute. And a lot of people have trouble doing that because, you know, it's it's almost, you have to admit, first of all, that someone's better than you at something. Yeah. And, and, and Which is really tough for most people. It's hard to do, especially yeah. if you feel competitive with them, or maybe you don't even like them. I mean, I like you guys, so I'm not talking about you guys here, but. I, I've learned, trust me, I've learned from people I don't like mm -hmm. because I don't like them as a person, but then there's something that they do or, or, or the way they do something where I'm like, wow, that is really impressive. Well, that, you know, on that note yeah. right there, that's a really good point to, or something to extend on is that a lot of times when we don't like something about somebody else or a person, a lot of it's because of our own insecurity about mm -hmm. that. Like, because they're a certain way. It's because, a mirror. Yeah, it is. Especially if it really triggers right, you. Right, if it triggers you and bothers you, like, oh, that really annoys me. Like, well, what is it that annoys you? And maybe it, it annoys you because it's a weakness of yours, because he does that really, really well, or she does that really, really well, and it, almost to a point where it, it turns you off. Yeah. But why does it turn mm -hmm. you off, or why does it annoy you? And maybe that's because you maybe don't have that skill set, or you, can, you don't have it at that level. And so there's, I mean, there's something to... To take from that for sure, mm -hmm. right? I always try and catch that. That's again going back. We talked a long time ago about, you know, how I would evaluate my day of like the state changes, like of emotion, like where, you know, where would I get all angry about something, or what, what would piss me off, or what would excite me? Like those are all like flags for you to be mm -hmm. like, go deeper into that. Like, why am I feeling this? This way? is this is one of this is one of the reasons why I really look forward. Like honestly, and 100% look forward to getting older or aging, because 
so far for me personally, and a lot of people, okay, not everybody, but most people or a lot of people, as I've aged, I've become wiser in the sense that I start to let go of the bullshit that tends to hold me back. Because the reality is this, the biggest obstacles in front of you are self-made ones oh, for the, yep. for most people. Well, not for all people, of course. There's definitely real shit, you know, terrible shit that happens. But for most people, those things that are in front of you that are preventing you from whatever, getting in shape or making more money or having a better relationship with your spouse or just being, you know, more fulfilled in life, it's shit that you put in front of yourself and it's so hard to move because you want it there for some particular reason. And something that's happened to me as I've aged is I've learned to not only identify that that's me, but then also be like okay with letting it like letting it go. Right. And it, it, it does require a little bit of you know, you there's always fear when you do that because many times you put those obstacles in front of yourself because you're scared of something. For example, if you're talking about somebody who has trouble lift, you know, gain, losing weight, so they put these obstacles in front of them to prevent them from losing weight. Many, one of the reasons why some of them are, are afraid of removing those obstacles is, well, what happens after I lose this friend called food? Like, wh- how am I going to be? What about the connections I have with other people? I've, this is part of my identity. I don't have this thing now that I can... Uh, you know, th- that I can bury myself in. I don't have this thing that's going to take me away from the present. I don't have this distraction. I don't have this friend. I don't have this whatever. Now that I remove this, what am I? Who am I? What is this? And the reality is making big changes, removing those things out of your way, they 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 do create big change uh, in your life. And that can be very scary. It's look, when, when I train, and this is a real statistic, when you have some a couple and that's overweight and unhealthy, and one of them finally makes the decision to get fit and healthy and all that stuff, the rate of divorce or the rate of them Extremely splitting, high. it goes through the roof because you change so much fundamentally, mm-hmm. and that's scary. Yeah. It's very, very scary. It's like I've known people who've grown up in situations where they were uh, just not a lot of success around them. Maybe their their parents weren't good with money and you know they've always been around people that didn't do well with it and didn't you know aim for high achievements and they're just surrounded by it and I've met people who had everything it took to be who were very talented had everything it took to be successful you could tell they were afraid to be because mm-hmm. they knew they'd leave everybody else behind like who am I now I can't hang around with these, I don't connect with these people anymore so they revert back to this block that's in front of them mm. to you know remain the same and so something that I found as I've gotten older is like I'm like, it's easier. It's easier just to move that shit out of the way. Yeah. And I, yeah. I appreciate that about you guys. You guys seem to the same, same way, you know? It, yeah. It's, I mean, it's tough because a lot of people uh, like being complacent and, and kind of building your, your safety net up is some like a goal of a lot of people. I want to get a job that's going to provide me and be consistent. And, you know, I can sort of like have this, this ecosystem set up where, um, you know, I don't have to really be challenged anymore. I don't have to be uncomfortable. Like everything is about, you know, relieving a lot of that uncomfortable feeling where, you know, it, it, it it's, a, it's a trap, man. It's, it's, it seems like, and it sounds to a lot of people very appealing, but to me, it's just living in that. It, it feels like just the slow, gradual death of like who I am. Like I, I'm, if I'm not growing, what else am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm literally just sitting there and observing and then just kind of going through life without any, um, you, you know, any thoughts that come through my head that are even uh, challenging me to, to do anything different. It's, it's, it's too comfortable. And it's, I, I know a lot of people like this that are still in that kind of mindset. Yeah. One of the worst places to be is to not feel or to not challenge yourself. That is a very scary. You're just numb. You're, it's a scary place to be. You know, there's that that quote that I like to read all the time, but you know, Teddy Roosevelt, the man in the arena. And at the end, it's like, you know, basically don't be one of those, you know, timid souls that feels neither victory nor defeat. Like the person who's doesn't even step into the arena, never takes a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, you never lose, but you also never win. And besides that, you never feel. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. you're just in one place. And I feel like as you you start to respect that more, understand that more uh, as you get older, at least some people do. And that's where wisdom comes from. And so I think you're right, Adam, had we all met 15 years ago and tried to do this, still would have been fun. I'm sure we still would have had some level of success, but it wouldn't be what it is now. 
I don't think at all what it, you know what it is now. No, I don't think so at yeah. all. Yeah, and one of the one of the for me at least one of the best things about what we're doing is there's a really good purpose behind it. You know what I mean? It's not like we're just. I mean, I guess anything you create that people want is is got some value, of course. But I feel really good about what we create. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I feel like we're communicating. You know, good messages. We're helping people sift through all the baloney in fitness to to help themselves a- along the way. But also, we're we're honest. There's a lot of in- integrity in what we do, and I really appreciate that because it feels good. I've made money before mm-hmm. where I didn't have this same sense of purpose, and it's different. It's not nearly as fulfilling. This is the most fulfilling thing I think I've ever yeah. done professionally. And there's a lot more uh, panic and that scarcity, you know, attached to to doing something just for money and, and surviving. And, you know, this, this doesn't feel like that at all because of that. Like I, I have a purpose, like I mm-hmm. wake up and I want to, I want to do something. I want to research something. I want to say something that, you know, entertains people or, or like makes them feel better or like educates. And I feel like it's so crazy because this, this provides all of that. Do you guys sitting here talking? Do you guys ever wonder though, if we're, if we're in the honeymoon stage? God, that's mm. a long honeymoon. Well, maybe, huh? What if we hate each other? No, it's <laughs> like five years. And I don't even think that, but I also try and challenge challenge myself with, because my, I agree with you guys, I feel the same way. I could echo everything you said, but I always still like to challenge my, my thought process and like, okay, so if you say that, Adam, that you're so comfortable and you're okay with letting go and moving on and changing sure. the seasons of your life, you know, what if this just represents a, a new season mm. and in six years from now, all of us are totally not into it anymore and we're into something. Like, Am I going to be okay with that? Will I feel devastated? Does that mean I failed at this or whatever? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't think so at all. I think if that happens, <clears throat> if that ends up being a place that we get to, then we'll be okay with it. Yeah. I, I mean, we'll all acknowledge it and be like, okay, well, we're, you know, well, that was great. I mean, that's the thing about awesome times in your life. Sometimes we try to also put, like I just talked about, putting blocks in front of yourself. One of the blocks that we'll put in front of ourselves is the fear of this ending. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I'm so in love. Uh, this is going to suck though. And what if it sucks in five years? What if I lose this person? Yeah. And, and you, end up, you end up missing out on what's right in front of you. And so to be honest with you, hmm. I don't care. I, I mean, of course, right now, if you ask me, I wish it would be awesome like this all the time, but... Yeah, we'll deal with who, it then. Yeah, who cares? It's fucking yeah. awesome now. Right, right. It's great now. I don't know what the what the future holds. I don't think... I don't know. I have no idea. If you really were to ask me, you know, are we going to be doing this in 10 or 15 years, exactly this? Of course not. Yeah. It'll, it'll be a different version of it. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess just in my own mind, I feel like it'll definitely be different. Like we'll be doing other things because that's just how we are. You know, we want to evolve and, Mm -hmm. you know, improve things. And so it may feel different. It may look different, but again, it may just be this, you know, it may just be this. And then everything else just kind of working for itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One one thing it's funny. uh, Justin and I had coffee with uh, what's his name? Sean Stevenson Mm -hmm. from uh, model health, I think show. Mm -hmm. And he's the, like, the, uh, what do they call it? The Mr. Rogers of Mind Pump? Yeah. The, yeah. Mind, the Mind Pump Mr. Mind Rogers. Pump, yeah. Rogers. Mind Pump Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah. Some, one of our fans yeah. said Won't that. Won't you be my neighbor? One That's of our it. fans said that. <laughs> is, that for, is that right? Dude, our fans, our fans oh, talk so much brutal. shit. <laughs> we've, we've conditioned them to talk shit <laughs> See, I thought about was, everybody. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I look at him more as like, you know, like very, like Barry White, like smooth. Yeah. Hey there. Smooth. Fitness and wellness. And yeah. Anyway. Anyways. Cool guy. Yeah. He's a cool dude. Cool guy guy that's why i'm saying this yeah. uh, but anyway he he's like oh shit how long you guys been on air i think he expected me to say like eight years because of the amount of episodes that we've done yeah. i'm like three years and he's like what he's like yeah. you've recorded 800 episodes in three years i'm like dude we do five a week yeah we don't really he recognize was blown away. That, that is significant it's different yeah well i don't think it's that to me it's not that significant i think it's it surprises a lot of these podcasters because again it's the old guard it's how things were done before but when you look at radio djs and radio t- tv and all that stuff like exactly that's true. i mean that's it's true. i mean, on like five days a week yeah they're on five days a week it's not that impressive it's it, it's, exactly. It's the norm. It's the standard. What is what I love about this business and mm. what excites me all the time is that it is so green. I love being the people that can come in and actually raise the bar and set the new standard for things. I was just uh-huh. talking to you guys off air about just the way we're going to handle sponsorships. Like I was so blown away when we started to get like real advertised money coming in and people constantly reaching out to advertise on the show that we had to create a department for it. Then I became very surprised by 
the way they handled all of it, just the processing of the money and then the follow up on it and the making sure all the URLs are getting connected. And it's just, it's a fucking shit show completely. And it's not, it's what not, an opportunity. Oh, such yep. a great opportunity to streamline. Anytime all of you it. see a shit show, there's an opportunity. <laughs> and the reason, and now there's, now there's a reason why it's been a shit show. The reason why it's been that way is because, you know, up until about two, three years ago, the money that was in podcasting for advertising was really low. I mean, you you rattled off the stat, bro. The other it, day. it went up in one year from 2016 to 2017 over 84 percent. Yeah, and they're expecting it to jump yeah. even more the following. Couple so of years. what's happening? Right it's all now, new. So what's happening right now is you, we're getting this flood of big brands that are now coming in and realizing, like, holy shit, we're going to stop doing radio, stop doing television. It's better for us to find these podcasts that are that are in our niche and yeah. and market and advertise with them because they can convert at a much well, higher you, rate. You've, you've also mentioned all the radio hosts that have now like simultaneously run a podcast because right. it's you know it's it's like they have to put their they have to hedge their bets. Right. You know, they, they have to, to see the life if they're going to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the life wraps and, there. And then I see these guys that have been doing this for, and some girls that have been doing this podcasting game for the last eight, nine years, and they just haven't evolved. Mm -hmm. And I, I just get excited, man, when I see the fucking fuck. Yeah, Dude, yeah. don't evolve. Don't worry. Biggest, we'll biggest mistake you can make in business. Biggest mistake is to not evolve, be afraid to evolve because- Nothing will destroy you faster. And it doesn't matter how big and powerful you are. What are the books on those ones? I remember these. Uh, my Iceberg is Melting and Who Moved My Cheese. There you oh, go. There you go. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> but I mean, I could name several companies that did that. Like, you know, Blockbuster. They were a massive, powerful company. Gone. Mm -hmm. They were gone almost overnight because they for, they failed they to evolve. Yeah. Look at the- Well, the and the crazy thing is, so you know, I'm reading that iGen book right now, which by the way is fucking fascinating. Oh, that's the one that we talked about, right? With the, the generation yes. growing up yes. on iPhone. And, you know, and some of the, the stats that, are, that they're coming out of that is just, it's crazy. And what they're saying is that everything that you've experienced in business and stuff before is accelerated times 10 and it's compounding, you know, Moore's law. We're seeing it now really at a much faster rate. It's crazy where- you know, trends or ways of doing things, you know, will be, it's the way to do things. And just when everybody starts learning about it, it's different. like, it's different. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Snap of a finger. Yeah, dude, you got to be moving. You got to yeah. be moving on stuff. Yeah. It's interesting. The podcast, uh, I noticed too, like a lot of people were relying a lot on these networks, like the, like podcast one and like the, the they were like relying solely on them to get them advertisement too. And so it was like, you heard like the same exact companies on like everybody's podcast and it's because like that's like the only structure that was in place you know in the podcasting world yep. that i saw well it was Here, a, it was a combination of both of the it's the networks and then also they just were limited companies that were advertising that's right you yeah, know what i'm saying like true. if you're in fitness there's like 20 big companies that were spending even interest and yeah, they're all supplements. taking a chance yeah they're all supplements or the, mm -hmm. yeah whatever you know what i'm saying there's only a handful and, of and them, here's so. the other thing to consider is that when you're when you're broadcasting which is like radio and tv you know, when you're listening to commercials on there, they're they're they don't reflect, they never reflect, or typically don't reflect, or at least in a small percentage, the show that they're coming on. So, in other words, I could be watching a TV show, and sure, the uh, the the advertisers know that there may be a certain age demographic or whatever, but it's not it's not very specific to the TV show. When you advertise with podcasting, and you're running a sponsor, it's you're kind of connected to them. Yeah. And so it's much more personal and it's different. It's not just a random bunch of commercials. Yeah. It's like here are companies that we have to make sure we, we, we vet them, but also that kind of complement the brand, that kind of go along with, with our message, people that you know we know will benefit us besides just the money that they pay us. This is different than it's been in the past. It hasn't been like this in the past where you watch a TV show. And of course, if it's a kid's show, they're not going to advertise for certain things and vice versa. But it's just general, like you know, like you know, here's a Chevy commercial. Here's yeah. a commercial for. TV I know it at least has a reflection. Well, there's yeah. there's of the there's, message on the show. There's a little more thought put into that than you guys think. There's you know they do. I just think because the cast the, the 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 net is so they have to cast such a wide net. Right, right, right. You know Which, what I mean. But even our net would look pretty wide if you know because if we were doing uh you know ten million listens every episode it would be you know our our net would be much wider and broader and, sure and those 10 million people even though we're a health and fitness podcast i bet you out of those 10 million well a hundred thousand drink sodas well here's an example you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like here's we could, an example though one of the not examples that we would advertise coca-cola well or something how like that, often my point is that, how often would you watch a tv huh. show let's say you watch modern family and the actors in modern family are the ones talking about the sponsors oh yeah 
See what I'm saying? Right, right. That's one of well, the big reasons. Now that's the future, right? Yeah. So we see it happening right now with YouTube, and then you know, could today IGTV came out. You know, so we're seeing this. You're going to see that now. TV is yes, dead. It's it's moving on from that, and then kids that are growing up now. They are following what their you know influencers that we mm-hmm. call them right now, which I think is so funny. Mm-hmm. We you know they they're following them. They're listening to them for what what brands are they using or what do they like? And those people are becoming more powerful than celebrities. Mm-hmm. We're right in the middle of that transition, so it still kind of works. So you still see a commercial with Shaquille O'Neal, or you still see a commercial yeah. you know yeah. with somebody that's with Tom Cruise or a big actor that. Yeah. But that's it's starting to fade. Yep, and you're starting to see these YouTube stars and. Cool. Instagram stars, you know, it's a, it's an interesting time to be uh, a part of all this and to to watch the transition. Oh, it's exciting! So, yeah. so we've done so many episodes. We've done, we've talked with each other for hours and hours and hours and all that stuff. And you had said something earlier, Adam. I thought was brilliant. You said, like, we we know a lot about each other. Maybe we could come up with something we don't know that we think is oh, so embarrassing. L- so last night, embarrassing. I, last which night I thought I, was good because well, well, last night I had this thought, and this is something I'm going to try and challenge myself to do this. So I, I, I hate putting it on air because then people are going to follow up with me. Why aren't you doing that? Um, but when I have these random thoughts of stuff that maybe we've never talked about or kind of challenges you guys question wise to at, think a little bit more, you know, like deeper into yourself, I want to do that. And so I had this moment, I was watching uh, TV with Katrina and I'm like, I fucking love this movie. <laughs> and then like, but it's, I can, and I'm telling Katrina, I'm like, I can only tell her this, right? Yeah, but I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, well, yeah. that's, if I put myself out there, I could share that. But I was like, so what I, what made me think of something was, okay. What is something about? I know the guys have something there. I can't be the only one here. If there is something that you either do or you like or that you're into, that the other two guys will totally tease you and make fun of you. And so I wanted to ask you guys: Is there something that you either do or you're into that the other two of us would make fun of Mm. you for doing or tease you? I've put all (laughs) I put so much already out there. Like you guys know, I like small dogs and cats. You guys know, like you know that kind of. Oh, you know, here's something. I don't know if I've ever said this before. Um, I'm not the greatest swimmer. Now I don't. I, I can swim enough to not drown. <laughs> but <laughs> why that doesn't surprise me? It doesn't at all. surprise me. I don't me. know why. I, I can picture like, you swimming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I can like, picture you swimming. So you want to know something crazy about this? So <laughs> I just picture you walking like, into the water I picture, about like to I your waist a, and then walking right back out. I yeah. picture a dog paddle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so here's the thing about that. You want to know what's crazy about this? Just panic. So my mom doesn't know how to swim and is terrified of water. Like she will not go in any water above her knees. She gets so scared, right? Oh, so I grew up with that. Now when I was a kid, my aunt had a pool and we were there. Every single weekend. Oh, shit. So and I swam. In. No, I swam all the time. I was a great swimmer, go underwater, touch the bottom, play, float, I mean, tread water. No problem as a kid. Yeah. But I think my mom influenced me with her fear over the years, and I didn't swim for a while uh, you know, as I, as I got older because I just didn't go to the pool or whatever. What's the longest gap in your life as a kid that you not swim? God, years because really? as I, yeah, as I got older, like, and, like more than five years. Yeah. Because I'd managed, oh, wow. you know, I'd managed gyms and worked and I just never went. That's a big deal though. Yeah, like, exactly. I mean, I'm the complete opposite. Like I'm definitely like a swimmer. I've talked about that. I love but to swim. But you go in the water a lot, right? Oh, every year I'll, I'm always swimming in a pool okay. or swimming in a lake. Okay. Or, so I, I didn't swim, swim for a long time when I was managing gyms. Oh shit. And and so then I would, you know, we, we I would go visit Italy, go in the water. I'd go real deep where I can't touch the bottom, and I'd start to like almost get out of breath. But it wasn't because I was tired. I think I was just getting anxious. Oh, yeah. And so I stopped doing it. Now huh. it's the point now where if I'm in deep water, like I won't drown. Oh God, did you? But know, I can you know feel. Push him in the pool. When he's <laughs> no. What if you kill me? He's so vulnerable right now. <laughs> I'll save you, bro. I won't let you drown. What if I die? Oh, but man. I gotta push you in the pool Dude, one time. <laughs> it's weird. You know what I mean? I knew you guys would make fun of me about that. Dude. A couple of assholes. A uh, couple of one-two jerks. Uh, what yeah. about you, Justin? Uh, Oh man, I think I was trying nothing like that, but like <laughs> nothing that bad, nothing that horrible. <laughs> no, it's 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 that bad. It just reminds me of what happened to me not too long ago, where I was like really really into this song uh, on the radio, and it was kind of like that movie where they both kind of get into this horrible song, and I think it was like uh, uh, Tommy Boy or whatever. They start singing like this shitty song. Anyways, it was Evanescent, so I'm like really like. Deep down, like, oh, I was like singing it and shit. And it was like it's a female rocker. Going under. You yeah. Know? And and I was like at a, at a stoplight. And, and some dude was looking at me and like the just this fear. 
in this this like oh my god like i'm really into this song but i just like felt so like judged you know like immediately and i was like if these if the guy saw me doing this and i was like really getting into it like i was like into that song and courtney has seen this before like with like certain things like, i don't want to like show everybody i'm like Dude. really into it but i'm into some pretty fucking yeah well that's, that's a chi- not bad at all well, well, it's, it's a chick it's a, it's a, it's a chick, chick rocker yeah i would chick. only you know what the only reason why i would make fun of you about that is because i know you'd be Sell, you'd be I'd be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the only reason why I put. You know, it's funny. I have a story. So, I have a story surrounding my the swim thing that I said because you just re- reminded me. I went to when I was in Kauai. I think it was either Kauai or Thailand. It was Kauai with uh, Jessica. So this is last year. Okay, mm-hmm. this is last year. We get on one of those. Uh, we do one of those day trips where they take you out on a boat to uh, to to go to different places to snorkel. No, it was Thailand. To go snorkel. And so we went to like Monkey Island or whatever. And they parked the boat. And like everybody get off and snorkel around. There's all these beautiful tropical fish and whatever in the water. And so I'm like, you know, I have that small tiny thing with, with swimming. That's And so I'm like, whatever, fuck it. I'm going to get in the water. <laughs> yeah. I got the flippers on. So I get in there and I'm like treading water and I'm doing okay. But I can feel that I'm having issues breathing because it's almost like it's making me anxious. You oh know my what I'm goodness. Yeah. But I'm like, fuck, I got to fight this, right? So anyway, we're doing this the whole time. And it was like... We were out there for four hours going from different now, spots. Now, different- at, at, at this point, have you communicated to Jessica? Yes. Okay, she yeah. knows. She I've knows. told her, and she's laughing or whatever. And, at one, and so <laughs> at one point, I put on a, a, a life vest. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm snorkeling with and a life like, vest. <laughs> so, like waist deep water. Oh, He's got a fucking yeah, life dude. vest on. No, no, no. It's deep water because you're snorkeling. So I'm like floating on I my wanna, Hey, I want to remake the starter pack for sound. I want to put those little fucking <laughs> the arm wings. You yeah, know, the, yeah, the blow water arm. wings. Yeah, yeah. water wings. Yeah. Well, no. So so here's the worst part, right? <laughs> oh, so because I guess because I was nervous, I was drinking a ton of water. So then I had to pee because again we're out there for four four hours or something like that. I had to pee super bad. No bathrooms, big deal. Just get in the ocean and take a piss. Now, do you know how hard it is to pee when you're anxious? Your fucking whatever it is, your prostate is just wants to tighten up. You want to tighten up. It's like squeezing up your butthole. You're like, huh, right? So I'm in the water. And I'm trying to tread, and the waves are coming at me, so I'm kind of like bouncing a little bit. And I'm already anxious because I got this fucking weird thing now with swimming. <laughs> and I can't pee, dude. Uh, I fucking Wow, can't you pee. have to be really... So I'm in the water, and I'm getting angry. Like, I'm literally getting... Because I'm pushing, but I can't pee. And I almost shit myself. Oh, the worst <laughs> Pushing feeling. so hard. Yeah. I'm like, this is fucking terrible. <laughs> at one point, I told Jessica, we're on the boat going to the next island. And I'm like, I can't... Like, I've never had to pee so bad. I thought I was going to hurt myself. I have to pee so bad. And she's like, just fucking pee right off the edge of the boat. Like she was like egging me on. I was like so close. I'm like, I don't even give a fuck. I'm going to, there's kids in here, whatever. I'm going to, we're in Thailand anyway. Oh, gonna, wow. gonna get I'm going to pee off the side. Terrible. That terrible is a really good one. Although that I can see. Good. Yeah, that yeah, is. I got to think of another one. That's a, that that's a really good one, man. I, uh, I, what I was watching. So what I was, I'll give you mine. Like it wasn't nowhere near as in detail as that. Like I'm trying to think now of a, something that I have like a major insecurity that surfaces every now and then. I was watching Devil Loves or Devil Wears Parada. Oh yeah, and I fucking love that movie. Yeah, what a I've watched that, I've, all day. <laughs> Parada. Yeah. I've, been, I've been watching that. I've been watching that movie. I don't know if ever since it came out. I've seen it so many times, and I gravitate towards it. <laughs> and I catch myself, dude. You're really into fashion. This well, is not a big surprise. Well, I, it's a total chick film, though. I don't, think, I don't even think there's a. Yeah, sing, but I don't think there's a single uh, male in the fucking whole entire. Yeah, movie. but you're you're. There's a lot of things about you that's there's, a girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can't paint your toenails, bro. Yeah, you're, not, you're like comfortable. You're not with it. girly, yeah, okay? Yeah, no, but you're definitely there's definitely a woman. You have like a man and a woman living. It's like in your a body. woman on the outside. Yeah, for, you know? <laughs> sure, yeah, for sure, for sure. Man on the inside, for sure. Actually, yeah. we all have a little bit of that. In, <laughs> yeah, in, in, in straight. Okay, words. so yeah, it's, <laughs> we'll go keep going, Adam. I don't cut no, you. no, that was it. That was oh. it. I was just just saying that that was something that I I know that you would, would tease me about. It's not that it's not it's not that it's weird. It's but yeah. it's that I wouldn't share that because it just I know right away. I'm going to get shit from yeah. any of my boys by sharing yeah. that, but it really is like a top yeah. favorite movie. Well, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. funny. I like watching. I like watching cartoons. I still watch cartoons by oh, myself. I, yeah, by myself all the time. I play Legos. Well, by you watch you sometimes. you watch the good ones though, like Ren and Stimpy and like the adult type cartoons. Oh, bro, yeah. adult cartoons to me sure, don't count. Sure, I'll the watch best. those. Yes, but I will also watch. I'll I love old. SpongeBob I love lot. old Tom and Jerry, and I love all the old, cool cartoons from when we were kids. That, that now when you watch them now you're like oh man these are cheesy but they're fucking awesome like yeah. the one you know what I'm talking about 
like the like the ones with the cavemen people, and they got the fucking dinosaur that shoots like Hannah fireballs. Out. Stuff. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that shit's fucking awesome, man. Uh, I watch it all the time. Yeah, uh, I, matter of fact, when I used to own my wellness studio, I had some cardio machines, and I would do cardio, and I'd watch cartoons, and everybody used to get a kick out of it. All yeah. the members thought it was the most funniest thing in the world. <laughs> are there any movies that you watch, Justin, that are that you're embarrassed that you enjoy? Um, like, what's the girliest movie that you like? Oh my god, I See, doubt he would tough. watch a girly movie. Yeah, it's tough for me because I. Again, this is where I don't know if I, I idolized my grandpa growing up and he was like the most masculine guy ever, right? My dad's masculine too, but he's like, he's a softy, he's a big softy, you know? And, and uh, so I was always like trying to like push that, that side of me away, you know, like, a, like shovel those tears back inside me, <laughs> you know, I can't let it happen. So I don't. I don't know that I've like I think maybe Bridesmaids, but that's you know That's funny. It's that's a funny, funny yeah, it's a really funny, funny movie. Um, there's no like I like I appreciate it and I what a it's just the sappy shit. Like so for instance, like Courtney and I, we didn't even like exchange vows when we when we got married just because it was like I don't think that's how that works. This is stupid. Like uh, yeah, but like the, the sappiness of it, right? So yeah. the, everything like I can think of, and I was actually like, one of the questions was like, what's the most romantic thing you've done? Yeah, do you, you do know? anything romantic for you? So I have done romantic things, but it's all been, um, you know, it, the own, like I know Courtney so well that it's not like I'm going to do some Hallmark thing and, and then, you know, do some like treasure hunt where I'm like planting little roses <laughs> and fucking, you know, that stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do something practical and- I feel and like that was a jab at me or something. By my side. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's actually more of my brother. That's how he like, <laughs> you know, anyways. So I was like, uh, think, uh, what am I talking about, dude? I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I wanted to ask you guys? Another question I wanted to ask you is, what have you learned about, including Doug on this, uh, what triggers each of us? Like, what are like, what sets us off oh, where we yeah. get frustrated or mad? Like, what are the things that, like, I know, like, oh, if that happens with Justin, Justin's gonna get hella pissed off or whatever. Yeah. Hella frustrated. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to think right now. We get pissed off a lot of the same stuff. I don't know. It's hard to sit. Doug's out. I know it happens. Oh, oh this is Sal. Huh? Oh, he's got my yeah, trigger. Yeah, any, anytime there's a technical difficulty, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> there is he'll no lose tolerance. Shit. Jesus, he'll lose yeah. his <laughs> shit. Dude, it happened. And I had it happen today, and in fact, I'm, so, I'm, I'm almost nervous to do anything anymore. Dude, outside. So, so here's the deal. Now, I think that's why this, it's happening. This more. goes right back to what I said, though. That's a sign of his insecurity because he knows he can't do nothing about it, and it drives you crazy. I mean, that's exactly what that is. I, well, let me tell you what happened today. I, you don't have to. I, well, I'll tell you. I was out there, and I'm doing a video. Uh, and with the, at the end of it, I'm t telling people about like, our guides. To, right? Doug forgot to hit record. Dude, no, no, no. Uh, kind of, kind of like that. I'm actually <laughs> halfway through the video, and I'm on fire. And here's the thing: when I do videos, oftentimes there's no script, there's nothing, and I just flow. I go for it, and it's hard to duplicate it once yeah, you hit it. Of once you hit it hard once, to replicate it. Yeah, once you hit it once, that's it, right? So I'm going. I'm halfway through. Doug steps on the stage. I know something's wrong because he never steps on the stage because otherwise it moves the camera. <laughs> and he's looking at the camera and I'm still going, but I know like something, something went wrong. And then I hear him. He's like, fuck. You know, yeah. he does that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. ah! <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's okay. It is what it is. I can I, count on one Doug hand. actually probably knows the answer to this best because Doug is like definitely more the observer and watches all right. this stuff like that. Can you think of all the times that each of us have been mad over stuff and what it was that typically causes it? I know with you, Adam, if... Something gets dropped. The ball gets dropped someplace. Uh -huh. You yeah. get very frustrated very yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think we've all dropped the ball here and there. Yep, and yeah. we see your, your <laughs> frustration <laughs> rise very quickly. <sighs> Justin is pretty easy going. Yeah. So it's hard to pinpoint. Oh, I've seen him get mad about some oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, I get mad. I get mad. I think you're right, though. Like, I've... <laughs> I I don't know. I, I've over the years I've really tried to like calm down because I know that it's to me it's way less worth it to get really visibly angry. Uh, I think it doesn't the, accomplish a whole lot, um, but at the same time, I get very angry. Like I, I think you're the funniest out of all of us who gets yeah. angry. Yeah. When you get angry, I get I get giggly. Uh, <laughs> you're like oh, just oh, I just man. push everybody away from me because like what I could see is I could see you like trying not to be angry. Yeah. yeah. But I know you're angry. Well, yeah. 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 I, yeah actually, yeah. to be honest with you, I learn a lot from watching. Actually, all joking aside, I learn a lot from watching you handle that because you have a very evolved way of handling uh, frustration, and it's evolved because the reality is. Allowing yourself to get that frustrated doesn't benefit, for the most part, sometimes it may, but it doesn't really benefit anything at all. It actually takes away from time yeah. that you could be you know, using to solving the problem. So I've actually observed that in you. 
Doug is very hard to get mad, but when he does, <laughs> it is the most entertaining yeah. thing. We've seen that when he was driving. That was fun. <laughs> Remember, like, yeah. where, where, we, where were we We driving? were driving to Adam's event, and he was like trying to get over. It was like traffic everywhere, and we were late. Oh yeah, and I just that was early on. Yeah, it was early on. I just remember seeing that was the first time I saw it. Like Doug get visibly pissed off. It was <laughs> like ah, yeah. like he everybody flashes. was against him. He yeah. flashes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, my, that was where the chimp came my, from. That's no, the chimp didn't come from that. No? The chimp came from when we no, were, we were trying to we were trying to put the he was trying to put the luggage. <laughs> he was the carry on, right? Oh, yeah, and, that's and we, right. I mean, think of this: we fly all the time, right? Yeah. So we always are getting on flights. We have the same fucking baggage that we always fly with, and just so happens that this time we're flying. Somebody stops Doug and says, "Oh, you need to see if I don't know if that'll fit in the yeah." Thing. And they have that little box that you can test yeah, to it's, see if yeah, it fits. it's a little, it's like a you know a metal box that you have to your bag has to fit in that or else it you know they say you can't take it on. And so I mean it like it's so close, yeah, it's like so <laughs> close to fitting perfect. And Doug, it's like Doug's trying to get it in there. He started. Yeah. Did you? St- I think he stomped on it. He started <laughs> fucking pounding it in there. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes, and, yeah. the, and it's because we were late, is what it was. We yeah. were late to get on the plane. Yeah, yeah. So Doug's trying to push it in. It won't go. In and the and the girl says to Doug because I was right there. The girl says, "I'm sorry, sir. It looks like it doesn't fit. I'm sorry, sir." And he goes, "No, it fits." And he's like, and then he lost it. He flipped <laughs> out. Yeah. And he's like, kuh, 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 and crushes. It. And he's like, "See, it fits." And then he <sighs> and she's just like, and the whole I'm thing gonna let his ass get on the <laughs> yeah, 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 The whole yeah. thing was stuck to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, tried to, I, tried to I dragged the whole thing into the plane. <laughs> <laughs> we were all, and, and Adam it. and Justin, I love it. I've had Adam and Justin like were ahead, and yeah. I walk up to Adam and Justin. I'm like, just keep walking. Doug's losing his yeah, shit. Yeah, just yeah, keep yeah. walking. Let, let him let him work this out. Because at that point, you guys didn't know that that, that side of him. Like, oh no, if that yeah. shit comes out, get the fuck out of the way. Doug's yeah. gonna kill someone. Oh, God, that's that's what yeah. I. One that's of my where favorite. the shiv came too. I think right after that. Yeah, right. that's where he had the I, I think you're Sal. You're probably the calmest. I think. Mm. I think. Uh, I think you're. Pre- you and Justin are pretty. Yeah. You guys are just way different the way you handle it. Yeah, you yeah. get you get very argumentative when you're angry and frustrated or like that, but you don't raise your voice. No. You don't mm-hmm. get like. You don't see yourself fuming. Like I know, I I put off the signs. Yeah, like, yeah, I have, yeah, I yeah. can feel the looks. You're the most <laughs> irritable, <laughs> for sure. Audible for sure. and physical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I I think for me too. I, what really sets me off is when when I fuck something up. You know, like I just like that's yes, true. actually that that, very that's true. when I, I get see, so that's a good point. fucking pissed, and and I and I, that's why I'm really trying to work on that because yeah. I just. Oh my god! Like I could leave the room and like not come back, like and just be like, "Fuck this!" I'm out, you know, and like, like abandon everything. Like I used to have that. Like, oh my god! Here's here. I'm gonna sell Justin out right here because this just happened, and this and I, it's a perfect example. And you're so right. This is how you get upset, <clears throat> and I can see, and it's great because you, I can see you holding it all in, right? Yeah. So maybe three weeks ago or so, I sent a message privately just to Justin saying, "Hey, I, I need your help with something." I said, "We have." This uh, we have Jordan Shallow coming in, and I just I, I need someone to help me organize that, and I need someone to make sure that Doug gets is preps it the camera and make sure there's no smooth yeah smooth. Can you make sure that you and him practice that and do that? And he's like, yeah, yeah, got it, got it. You know, so weeks go by, we get closer, and it's like four or five days. I'm like, hey, are we gonna be good on the camera? Like, yeah, no, we're cool. Doug and I are gonna do it probably on Monday or whatever. Okay, so I don't say anything, and then the day it, it's supposed to happen. Doug and him are like fucking. It's not working, dude. Yeah. And I know Justin. I was watching that, and, dude. And, and yeah. I'm not saying anything because I know I already talked to Justin about this, right? So I know I'm not gonna fuel the fucking fire at all. But I, and I know he's really upset and mad because he knows I I asked him. I asked him fucking weeks before and followed yeah, up and just yeah, said. Yeah, I, yeah. I, and I don't do that a lot. It's rare that I reach out to one of you individually and ask for like helping me because sure, yeah. sometimes I just get a little overwhelmed with. Of course. All the stuff, and I'm like, hey, I, I need you here, and this I, this is pr- a priority for the business. Can you just execute this? And so I asked that, and then that day happened, and then I see Doug and him like fucking wanting to choke <laughs> yeah. each other out over yeah. it. Oh yeah, that was tough. Yeah, but what was great? So here's the thing that's cool, and I didn't say anything, right? So I don't want to say anything, but I was I was frustrated. I was pissed inside. I was. I didn't say anything. Yeah, I knew that. But, and so I was I was like inside, I'm kind of like, Ugh. and I'm like, I got to handle this, right? So I called up my brother-in-law, who I know is like super tech savvy. And I'm like, hey, dude, I need a big favor from you tonight. And what really sucked was the next day I knew I had to be up at five in the morning. And I'm like, I need you to meet me down at the studio at like eight o'clock tonight when you get off. And like, I need, you, I need to bang this thing out. And then I was going to go do it. I wasn't going to tell any of you guys. I was just gonna have it handled, mm-hmm. and then I was gonna be mad. <laughs> so I was gonna, <laughs> but so I had this all worked up in my head, and then like I got like a text, and I'm so glad I did because I already got my brother to confirm we had already planned on doing it. Justin sends me a text. 
fucking figure this shit out. You know what I'm saying? He had <laughs> so it. Yeah, yeah, no, he did it all. He, yeah. he went down to Fry's or Best Buy or whatever he needed for the part. He came down. He totally hacked it all himself, set it all up, ran it, made oh. sure it was all good to go, stayed late at work. And I was like, God oh, bless fuck. you guys, man, because I hate, hate dealing with that stuff. Cannot, like you, you called it, Doug, for whatever reason, mm. I'm like, me and machines <laughs> just don't, we're just not cool. You know what I mean? And it and seems you, like lately it's really ramped up. Like you know, of every course. time you're on a podcast, of course like, it is. That's how shit works. Cuts out. It's gonna keep pushing me yeah. till I learn to be cool with it. Uh, that, it's, that's it. it. It's fucking with you right oh, now. Oh, I've done a couple interviews where I'm. Yeah. It's over Skype or whatever, and it cuts out, and I'm just like, oh. oh, oh. I just hate being part of this lesson you're supposed to give. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Doug has to bear the brunt. Of, yeah, Doug does. And we all get a little frustrated. I'm just, I am like, I'm not near as bad as Sal, but I get frustrated with that stuff too. And it's again, I the reason why I think I don't is because I'm very aware it's my Dude. insecurity. I know that without Doug, I, there ain't no way I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just am not going to do it. I'm not going to go figure it out. We're like I, three monkeys in a freaking... Right. So yeah. then I just kind of accept it. I'm like, well, he fucking, he's better than I am at it. So Dude. even yeah. if he fucks up, it's better than what I would have done. Yeah. And you know what? I, I will say this though. If, if we, when one of us sees that one of us is frustrated, we tend to not add more to it. Like my favorite example of this uh, was, yeah. I, don't, I don't know where we were coming from. We, we had so, Florida. We were in Florida, and we just recorded several fire interviews. We we're really, really happy with it. Oh, Every man. we had video, audio, like like we went over there. We worked we our ass even off. Talked about this? Did we talk about this? A little bit. Oh, okay. it, we we flew over there. It's a long flight. We're tired, but we we went after it, and we really did a good job. We were really proud of ourselves. And so we get up, we get up, and we're we're trying to get home. Get on the whatever it is, the tram that takes you to the area where you can get, get on the plane. We all get on there. We, at first, we park our, our rental car, grab our stuff, get on the tram. We're heading over there. We're kind and, of and, in a hurry. Yeah, no, we're cutting it close. Yeah, we're, we're in a hurry. So we're like, oh, shit, we're going to be late. And so we see Taylor, and, and it's you know Justin, Adam, and I. We see Taylor. We're like, where's Doug? Mm-hmm. He's like, Doug, uh, Doug lost his luggage, can't find his luggage. He must have yeah. left it somewhere. Yeah. And so all of us- Like, what do you mean? Collectively, you could feel our hearts drop. Yeah. yeah. Because we know that Doug is holding- Yeah, like, none of us give a shit about his it. personal stuff right away. Everyone goes like, <laughs> does he have the fucking does files? Does he have the cameras? Yeah. Does he have the yeah. files? Yeah. yeah. Is it the suitcase with all the files that we just did fucking hard at three days of work for? Yeah. You know? So I called Doug. First of all, we're all sitting around. We're all stressed. And, and we all actually talked about this. Doug, I didn't even think we ever told you. We all talked about it. We're like, look- Nobody yeah, we, get mad. Yeah, I remember all three of us. Are right. uh, we were all angry as fuck. Yeah, Everyone's right. like, "How the fuck could he do that? Yeah, I can't believe yeah. we're all venting to each other." Yeah. Like, listen, but you know he's stressed out. You know he's yeah. freaking out. Oh, yeah. You can't well, flash on him. Like, Nobody get like mad. Panic attack. Yeah, he's already stressed out. If yeah. I know Doug, and if we just get mad, it'll make it the likelihood he'll find it's going to lower. So let's just be cool. Be cool. So I call Doug on the phone, super calm. I'm like, "Hey, hey, what's up, man?" And he's breathing hard. <sighs> I, I'm looking for, <sighs> I'm looking for the luggage, and I know he's running. Yeah. yeah, I can hear over the phone that he's running to find. Oh, I had to take a tram all the way back to the rental car place, yeah. and then find the car. The cars have been taken away to be washed. Oh my oh, god! Man. And so I'm <laughs> I'm stressed there, and then there's a line to the front of the rental car place, and so I I, I just sort of cut in front because I have no time. Right. Yeah. And then the guy gets angry at me. Does he really? It doesn't help. And then I find this other guy that's not very helpful. And then finally, I say, I tell you what. There's fifty dollars in it for you if you can find that car. You actually, I, bri- offered- I bribed the guy. Uh, I didn't know Did that. you give him yeah. fifty bucks? Well, I didn't no, because it, they failed. brought the car back and that guy was nowhere to be seen. I would have given him the money. Oh wow! Oh wow! Wow! So you're lucky because I've left shit in rental cars before, Gone. and it within five Don't minutes, yeah. two times yeah. within five and minutes, especially stuff like that, cameras and computers and like that's what and, I lost. Yeah. I lost two cameras that way. Yeah, and let wow. me tell you something right now. I was in, within an inch of fighting everybody that worked there. Yeah. I'm like, you're all in on it, and I'm going to fight everybody. I almost did that two times. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah I felt for, the same way. Yeah, but he found it, and uh, he comes back, yeah. and I'd never Praise felt- Praise Odin. It's, it's got to be the fastest and most dramatic state change I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> well, here's a funny yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. I completely forgot that the actual recordings were in my other bag, which I had given to Taylor. So there was a backup. Oh, there was a backup. Nice I, I back up all the cards. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as a matter of practice, and so there was my computer, which I backed it up to. That was in my backpack, which is what I left in the rental car. But the actual memory card that was in the recorder was in my other suitcase oh. that Taylor had. But I completely forgot that 
because I was stressed. Oh, right? I didn't know that. See, if I would have known that, I wouldn't care because we all we all agreed that like we were asking, we're like, is that all the files? Because I don't care about the computer and the camera. We're going to buy a new one of yeah, those. Yeah, you can replace that. Yeah, you can't replace the content. No, the content it was a ton of work. The whole trip was about that. I mean, oh, that you now yeah. you. I mean, those trips cost the business five to ten thousand dollars depending on how long we're there that's a major investment in time and yeah just, yeah we're right? just pissing that away oh, oh my yeah. god yeah. No, that was crazy <laughs> believe the, me all these thoughts went through my head Doug, I mean, those, Doug gets on the plane sweaty because he's yeah. been running or whatever yeah and just i think you slapped on the plane afterwards you must have just had an adrenaline dump <laughs> those are probably the two most dramatic times i've seen doug right the yeah. p- the luggage thing and that i yeah. can't think of anything more than that i'm trying to think of justin's like the two like most like dramatic things or the mm. most angry i've ever seen him he you got pretty upset recently with taylor with him uh oh yeah cutting, yeah. It, cutting in on some of I your, did what get, you were, yeah i got a little upset with him oh, yeah <laughs> you took him outside I, I had to tell him right before yeah. i'm like dude yeah don't, don't blow him out i just spit like fucking it's, two it's <laughs> funny dude yeah because old me would have just like chewed and you know chewed his ears off you yeah. know and like like let, laid into him but it's just like no dude like i i checked myself immediately even before he said that i yeah. was like i i i feel visibly like i want to like you, you i'm in that state i'm in that very high state of yeah. pissed off and like why you know over what and so i started to like ramp ramp down just enough to like have a conversation but yeah i was i just felt like mm, and, and to his points like he he made some good points as far as is the the overall imagery and everything that was trying to be accomplished but i was kind of in a place where i'm trying to get all these side projects done and like done you know and like i don't i don't care like i know and some he just things slowed it down yeah and then that just completely put a block <laughs> You know, well, in, in the whole project process for me. So that was frustrating. This is a common thing that happens in workspaces that I think a lot of times employees don't think about this. Like you work for this multi million dollar company, right? Or maybe it's a billion dollar company. It's huge, hundreds of employees or whatever. And you know, you're a top performer, you're great, you're great at all these things you do, but you you have no idea what the CEO is talking about every single day. You have no idea what the CFO, CMO, what they're all doing. And and that's that's us. And there's so many moving parts to the business, right? And so when you get somebody else who's really good at their job, like I mean, Taylor, that's why he's a part of this team, because he's unbelievably talented. Right. And, and we all respect his opinion, of course. But, right. You know, it's yeah, it's one of those things where it's okay, now your opinion has you know, affected like the actual progress of work and, and what, you know, other things that we're trying to get accomplished, you know, through different channels and for mm-hmm. different purposes. Well, he made a mistake of showing his distaste for something that we were doing within the business in front of another employee who's creating that for us. And right. that's, you know, what, and that's, so, and it's undermining what you're doing. That's what it you was. Also, and it that's, was the that's, undermining thing that yeah, I got pissed right. about. That's why you got yeah, mad. Yeah, absolutely. It's the, it's, it's the undermining of what you're trying to do. It's like, hey, dude, it's not, I, you don't think I know this isn't the greatest work I've ever exactly. put out or done. Yeah. You don't, what you don't know are there's 10 other things that are being done and this needs to be done tomorrow mm-hmm. and I don't have time to fuck around with it and make it pretty and make love to it. Thank you. So this is... <laughs> Very beautifully put. Yeah. This is this is definitely a common thing in, in business. I, I remember used to ha- I used to have these conversations with trainers that work for me. You know, you work for this giant company that has thousands of employees and all you can see is in front of you. You can see your position. This is what, a great book for this is uh, 360 Leader by John C. Maxwell. <clears throat> talks about what it's like to be in middle management when you have shitty people above you, shitty people below you, and shitty peers. How do you manage yourself in that? And part of that is understanding that you don't fully understand your boss's boss's position and, what the, and the decisions that they have to make. The mm-hmm. ultimate direction. Right. The fact that they're in that position automatically, and it's not to say there's not shitty people up mm-hmm. there. I mean, there's absolutely bad managers and bad leaders by all means, but it doesn't mean that you fully understand all the decisions that have to be made. And sometimes that's really naive for you to think that way. Now, now, so, yeah. when I, now sometimes I do think that that is the responsibility on leadership also. I mean, one of the things that I always tried to do when I had large staffs was I need to paint the clear vision and direction that everybody's going the big picture so that there is none of that. Oh, I'm doing it this way because I don't know. I don't know what the real clear vision is. And you know, a lot of times that's the responsibility of leadership. Like, Mm -hmm. well, if they don't know, we need to make it more clear because obviously they don't know 
the true and real direction. Well, yeah, that's, we're not selling it well enough. <clears throat> that was part of why I had said something to Justin before he went in there and kind of lit him up, or what I thought he was going to lit him, or light him up over, was because I had just spent two hours before that at mm. breakfast, kind of expressing this to Taylor and letting him know because I was aware of his feelings on some of the stuff that we were creating. I said, "Listen, dude." You don't understand that this there's going to be phases of this. Yeah, this is not the last website. This is not the last time that we create graphics like this. Like, well, yeah, and to be fair, like that was also an, it's something of a struggle for me in this business. Like since day one, like I've had to learn to really um, think of it in, the, in those terms. As far as like you can't you can't come right out of the gates looking like you know Nike and looking like these multi million dollar companies. And, you know, that used to be my mentality. I want it to look the best. I want to, you know, have the best content, have, you know, everything nice and sharp and like professional and, you know, to work at this speed with as many people as we have. And, you know, it's just, it, it's impossible. Yep. And, you know, like that's, that's all part of growth for me individually. Like I have to check myself, like this has to be done. So this has to be done. I have to make compromises. And so to hear somebody challenge those compromises was tough, you know, right. cause it's sure. like, cause you already feel that yeah, way. Yeah. I've already worked through all that. Like I understand where you're coming from completely, you mm -hmm. know, it's so for, <laughs> so yeah, dude, it's, that, that, that is something that keeps coming up with me, but I, I've, I've learned to just, I have a job. I'm doing the job. It's one of the biggest mistakes with people who try to uh, try their hand at entrepreneurship. One of the biggest mistakes is they're so afraid to take that first step because they want to make it. By analysis, they want to make it so, so perfect fucking, yeah, before common. they go forward. Here's the deal: there, there's a lot of unknown when you're uh, in business, especially if it's your business or you're starting a business. In fact, there's way more unknown by a multitude of like a hundred than there is of the known. And the only way you'll know some of that unknown and start to figure it out most times is if you move forward because you'll figure out really quick what you're doing wrong and then you can change it and it's do it right. It's inevitable. But to predicting it yes, in good luck. Any, anybody that's ever built anything of, of magnitude that's millions of dollars will tell you that they made tons of mistakes on the way there and tons of failures. So the way I look at it is it's, it's a race to get to those. Yeah. You know, and if you think that having a website that isn't the, doesn't look like Nike right out of the gates is what's going to cause this business to fail. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, let's go. Let's to, and let's see. Maybe you're right. I maybe you have split tested that. Right. You know? Like right. I know it doesn't work. Right. Maybe you're you, wrong. I mean, you, you know, like, yeah, you have to generate income. You have to have liquidity in your business. You have to be able to move forward with cash. It's like, just not the biggest rock, right? No. I mean, I had this, this was part of the talk that I had uh, with this group yesterday was, you know, so many people, they get so hung up on the way their, their business card looks, or they're trying to attract all these people on Instagram. And it's like, but they're really not providing any real value for the consumer. It's like, mm -hmm. if you haven't figured out the real value that you're, you're adding to your consumers, like you don't have a really good, solid business, like spend most of your time and energy in that instead of trying to waste it on like having the coolest website or this app that makes it so simple and easy mm -hmm. and speedy mm -hmm. for people. It's like, yeah, those things are all great things. And those things are that, that I think it would be great to have for a business, yeah. but yeah. You can build a business well, without so anything. funny. That's totally now for me is like it's flipped. Right. So those used to be the priority, like building an app, like making the awesome pretty website, like having attracting people through, you know, imagery, you know, completely at the the opposite end for me now. It's right. crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, and here's the other part of pr providing value. When you truly believe that what you're doing is bringing real value to people, then you have a belief in it and it gives you a stronger uh, it gives you a stronger sense of character with what you're doing and that's important when you're an entrepreneur because that's what's going to keep you doing what you're doing when shit is hitting the fan and you're failing at things otherwise your first failure or your second or your third failure you're going to be like fuck it I'm done mm -hmm. I'm not going to do this anymore it's like look I can I can go down a list of entrepreneurs like what's his name Colonel Sanders with KFC do you know how many times he got turned down mm. with his recipe he believed in it so much that he made it through all those no's before he finally got that big yes. Same thing with Macy's, same thing with any major business or company or tech industry, you know, business where they had created something, nobody liked it, mm -hmm. and so they had to keep at it and keep at well, it. Well, think about how what we did here. It's I mean, I I get a lot of people that are interested in starting a podcast and they're really nervous to start the podcast because 
you know, I don't know what we're going to talk about, or I don't know this, or I don't know that. I'm like, I, that was a lot of the same unknowns that we had. You yeah. know, we had an idea that we, we wanted to talk about, about fitness. it real time. Right. And what's, what's neat about this medium is you can put something out and then you could pay attention to what people say or don't listen to. Like if they're not listening to you, just your, listen to yourself. You know, yeah. That, That's a great I, I mean, one. it's yeah. a, it's a, it is, it's a, it's a great way to feel it out. Or we could sit there and deliberate over what we're going to say and what we're going to talk about and spend all this time. It's, it's again, it's been, it's become become our secret sauce or our secret weapon with with this space is that everybody anytime we meet somebody that podcast they just don't understand how it's mm-hmm. possible that we can do five episodes yep, it's yep. because well that's because we don't sit there and overanalyze what we're going to say because those people's desired outcomes are wrong yep. yeah. their desired outcome is okay I, i'm going to make sure we say all these right things because i'm trying to lead these people to buy some they're looking at it just like that versus how can I provide something that adds a ton of value to people's life? If I can do that, then the business piece will be really easy. Look, make a make a plan, even a bad plan, but be okay with changing your plan as mm-hmm. you go along. That's yep. the key, really. That is the key. Make a plan, follow it. When shit goes wrong and when you fail at certain things, which is good, expect that. That's really the only thing you can expect because everything else is unknown. So expect that you're gonna it's not gonna be as good as it's gonna be. That's it. Then you go forward and be okay with changing your plan. If you do those two things, you're probably, and you've got good integrity and you work hard, you're not lazy and all that stuff, you're probably going to succeed. The likelihood that you're going to succeed is higher than the likelihood that you'll completely fail and burn out or whatever and get destroyed. And th- look, this is true with with fitness as well. I've said this before, and actually I haven't said this in a long time, a consistently applied bad workout plan is better than a great workout plan that's never applied or applied very inconsistently. This is true. Mm-hmm. You see, if I see if someone has bad programming but they're consistent and they stick with it and then they change things as they move along, they're going to succeed better than somebody who has a great workout plan yeah. but just doesn't apply it consistently or doesn't apply it at all. Obviously, the greatest plan in the world is shit for you if you don't move forward. Right. So you got to be okay with finding out what you're doing that's wrong. And really sometimes the only way to figure that out is to move forward. Otherwise it's this potential sea of, of, uh, you know, unknowns and all your, the best thing that you could possibly, I mean, you're basically guessing. It's a lot like you're trying to predict. It's a, it's a lot like a fitness goal or a weight loss goal. I mean, it really is. And and what people are struggling with right now is we live in this instant gratification. We live in this social media world where, I can all of a sudden add 10,000 people following me in a day. That's possible. It's possible to do that. That is not a real business. Like no business opened doors day one and could really handle 10,000 people walking through their door. They just wouldn't unless they, I mean, no one would foresee building something like that. So the same way goes for building a business nowadays. It's just different mediums, different Mm -hmm. platforms that we're using. You wouldn't want that. I was saying this yesterday too on this talk. It's like you wouldn't want, I used to tell you guys all the time, right? When we talk about potentially going viral, I'd be like, that would be the best and worst thing ever yeah. to happen for us. We are not, We at that time when we were having those conversations, we were not a sustainable business, you know? And, and sure, we would have made a bunch of money real quick, you know, because we had this flood of people come through, but we, we would have been done. Yeah. But we've been done. You we, know, I was, I've been thinking about this a lot because of the frustration of like growth and, and we're always pressing so hard to grow and, you know, we've, we've done a good job of recognizing that, you know, real growth happens at a gradual pace because it, it basically challenges your systems and then your systems reveal, you know, holes and then you got to fill those holes and then you can progress, you know, f- you know, through that at a, at a reasonable pace that makes sense. And, you know, I'm thinking about that and thinking about like how, um, you know, everything that I've experienced in life um, you know, that I had a choice whether it's hard or it's easy. I want it to come easy or I want it, I wanted to go through it and go through the hard way. Like it, to me, every time I've gone easy, there's been a cost. Mm-hmm. And oh. so like every, every single time, like I can't even think of a time where I got something super easy, but then there was this thing that popped up or some attachment to it that was negative. Well, this is, this is why I think one of the greatest and worst things that'll ever happen to health if we ever get to this point is when we finally discover fitness in a pill. If if we ever, if we ever discover it, it'll be the best and worst thing that ever happened because people will get what they think they want and realize it's not, it's not at all what they wanted. I don't think we were made that way. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. If it's possible, think about it this way. If there was a magic way to do that, to snap your fingers and boom, no, no, you're right. Here's what would happen. They would have gained no growth and learning from the process. All they would have is the, 
all they would have is the side effect of what they could have happened through all that growth and process and learning and change. So now here I am, I look fit, I look healthy, but I don't have any of the, I haven't gone through the work that it's taken to change those behaviors, to change the way I look at food, to change the way I look at exercise, the way I look at myself. And what you'll end up having is a bunch of dysfunctional, lean people who aren't really healthy in the in the truest sense. It's really no different than lottery winners and That's it, the exact same. I use the lottery winners and biggest losers as examples of this. Yep, yeah. yep. I'm like you you don't want to win in like you don't want to win like that. You you wouldn't want to create you won't want to hack the YouTube algorithm or hack the Instagram rhythm or algorithm to where or do something funny where you're jumping over cars or you have some weird gimmick that you do to attract people or you show naked photos and you blow up like that. You wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want that for you. You're not mm-hmm. going to build a sustainable business on it. It's just like the lottery winners that all of a sudden get millions yeah. and millions of dollars, almost what lose 80, all, and they lose 80% all their friends. Of, 80% of them end mm-hmm. up losing it all anyways. It's, and their friends. They right. lose their friends. Lose Same, their think about how the expectation of all your friends and family after that, like you got all this money. You know, like obviously I'm entitled to some of it. That's right. You know, it's like that all that gets attached to it. So it's, it's, there's always something, dude. There's always something that, you know, you have to consider if I'm going to, you know, really pursue get rich quick, you know, or, or, you know, whatever these easy pursuits may, may sound great. This is why, and I know you guys are the same way. This is why I look with extreme apprehension at the current, Mm growth of this underground movement that's becoming mainstream in in what that uses mastermind no that uses oh. uh, the tool psychedelic tools oh, for right, right. personal and spiritual growth because what we're seeing right now is this this was an underground and now it's starting to grow and it's being sold as the pill it's like the fitness pill but instead it's this is the spiritual pill and take this and boom you're going to you know evolve your consciousness grow be this awesome great mm-hmm. new person mm-hmm. beware of unearned wisdom. Mm-hmm. That's some, one of the one of the most uh, one of the best quotes I've ever heard. I forgot who said that. Yeah. But beware of unearned wisdom. It's because, powerful. Yeah, it because is. Uh, there's a reason why it takes a long time for a person who meditates for years or a monk or a spiritual leader to get to that point where they've achieved that level of consciousness or awareness. There's a reason why it works that way. And doing something that just gives it to you, boom, quick. Yeah. It's not well, the same. And it and it's it comes with its own dangers. This is why I'm a huge advocate for uh, that for those substances to be integrated into medicine because the way I think they should be used is you're going to sit down with a therapist and mm-hmm. these will help, but the hard work is what we do afterwards right, and during right, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Well, it's even like when we talked to Paul Check about you know because we've gone back and forth on potentially doing like one of these ayahuasca type of journeys or whatever like that, but and, and I've gone like well. I'd have, I'd have to be in the right space. I'd have to be the right person to do it with. And we've all agreed that, you know, Paul is such a, has become a good friend of ours. And one of the things that I thought was really cool and what made me even go, okay, I could see where I'd want to do this with this guy was because even the way he goes about it, he's like, no, 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 if we do this, you guys are going to come up and stay with me for three to four days before. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a lot of the real work sober going into it because that's really you got to prep yourself yep. it's not yeah. let's just go get high as fuck and then go on this trip and get as close to god as possible or whatever these yeah. guys are talking about like that's that's not how you want to do this and yeah, I, think, I was banging tree leopards <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it got really weird yeah. whoa i don't know I just, yeah. i've heard stories uh, yeah. you know, i yeah. keep hearing weird stories yeah. who was it this one of our friends told us that uh, uh, he had sex with himself while a leopard was biting his leg <laughs> his, his something throat. like that yeah, yeah. you know so, who you are yeah, if you're listening yeah, yeah, yeah. that's our you boy know. connor uh, ah, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn it Adam. Uh, dude i'm sure he sh- i'm sure he sh- yeah, shared that story he shared that story he definitely has yeah well you know we're all in this race to get to the finish line Line. And the the reality is that the, the the beauty of the race is the race. It's not what's at the end. You know what the finish line is? When you die. Actually, probably not even then. There's probably more after mm-hmm. that. I think mm-hmm. trying to get the goal, the prize, you miss out on the real beauty of all the struggle and everything that it took to get there. In fact, I, I, can't, I can never remember this term. There's a psychological term for something that athletes go through when they train super, super hard and focused for an event. Like let's say you're, you're training for the Olympics and you're just fuck. you're trained for four years. You know, you're, you're, you're trained to be the best in the world at something. And it literally, you dedicate your entire life to it. And you, all you're focused on is the gold medal. I want the gold medal. And then you finally get to the Olympics. You finally compete. You win the gold medal. 
It's just incredible feeling. And then afterwards, it's quite common for people to go through a deep depression mm -hmm. because they've lost that purpose. They've lost that goal. Oh, I felt a little bit of that after the competing thing. See? Yeah, yeah. And you, there's a term for it, by the way. This yeah, is a psychological Yeah, no, phenomenon. you I, I felt a little it was like it was a while afterwards. Like so there was a high after that. Like sure. that was like this mm -hmm. was a you know, that was like a three year goal. Like, you know, I remember when I had put it out there and said, This is what I'm going to do and then chipping away at that. So that was probably one of the longest, most vigorous goals that I've ever gone after. Like just I'm gonna do this. You know, I know it's gonna take a long time and dedication. So there was a lot that led up to that, and then the, you know, the climax of it was incredible. I mean, it was one of the most amazing moments of being on that stage and going pro. And I remember, like, I was on that high for like six months, and then once the business, this business started to kind of take off, and then that was no longer like the priority. You know, I went through this kind of like, Ugh, I don't even want to lift right now. I know, you know, yeah. like I'm over it. You know, what I'm saying yeah. like I'm. O I, I remember that. Yeah. I remember you saying that. I yeah. mean, it's it's happened to me. I remember before. telling you guys. Remember me saying yeah. like I'm. I can't wait to not be that guy. Mm -hmm. Like I've everybody thinks I'm that guy, and that's whatever they've attached me oh, to. Yeah, I went through that with football. Yeah, when I was done my very last game and uh, was looking at everybody on the field. And was just remembering, like it was, it was weird. It was surreal, but at the same time, like immediately, I had this like like pit in my gut, like it was depression, mm -hmm. you know. And it was setting in because it was an, it's it was like an era, you know. It was a time capsule of like since freshman year until you know, like through college. Like I mean, I don't, that was who I was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was hard to let go. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's that's because you're leaving something that you love. But, you know, what I'm talking about is like when people just focus so heavily on the goal. On that one thing. Yeah, like, like, like your goal is to win a Super Bowl. You finally do. And then afterwards, uh, yeah, you're yeah. like, now what? Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like. Yeah, it, and, it, it normally has to be this big, huge. Goal specific. Yeah, right. And there's a term for it. And I can't remember what it was. And, you know, the antidote to that is just to learn to, to enjoy the process. Like do things for, sometimes you want to do things or learn to do things for the sake of doing them and finding pleasure in them. Spiritual practices and religions have known this for a long time. Chanting or you ever go to like these, uh, I think is it Japanese or Chinese gardens, uh, Doug, where they where they, they comb the, the rocks or the sand? It's Japanese. Japanese yeah. Okay. So the goal of that is not to create just to have this beautiful looking sand. That's not the purpose. The purpose is while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. It's the enjoyment of the actual thing itself rather than, Focusing just on the goal, and I and that is a hundred percent the secret of lifelong success in fitness. That mm. is the secret. Right. The secret is not set a goal, hit the goal. That's I, that's a process, and that's part of that's the a process. By, that's a byproduct of it. Yeah. The secret is find enjoyment in the actual activity of fitness. Find the enjoyment in the actual art of taking care of your body. Dude. Find enjoyment in the in the, the work and the struggle. That's it. The mm -hmm. And then you'll never stop. Right. Learn like it's okay to start eating a certain way and start training a certain way and being consistent with it so you can actually measure and and finding out that oh that didn't work very well. You got to be okay with that. Like you that's not that's not a failure. Right. That's like that's you learning more about your body and where you should be or what you should be doing. Like Learning to be okay with that because you, now you, if you're a, if you're aware, a self-aware enough person, you'll 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 download that information. You won't make that mistake again. Mm -hmm. Like I know that when I do X, Y, and Z, like this is what happens. So now I build upon that, and so treating that's the whole process. Just finding that you enjoy the whole process. I mean, you, when you get to a point, and this happens, this happens to us all the time. We'll go on a trip for five or six days, and our nutrition will kind of get thrown off because we'll eat out quite a bit, and we'll all say the same thing, like. Oh man, I can't wait to get home to eat like a big bowl of vegetables and something real healthy or whatever. Like what? You know why? Because I think we've learned to enjoy the actual process of eating healthy, not because I want to get lean, not because I want to build muscle, not because anything else. That I actually enjoy that food. Well, I enjoy I think, the process. I think it. we've also done a really good job over all these years, and people that are like this too, is of connecting the dots to how when you eat that way how better how much better you feel sure yeah. right and then how much crappier you feel when you're not feeling your body and i think for many many years i wasn't in tune with that for many many years you know i was always oversaturating myself with garbage all the time and i was so inconsistent with the way that i fed my body mm -hmm. that i was so numb to all the signals it was may have been trying to give me mm -hmm. but over the last like 5 5 to 7 years of my life i've really honed in on that and because of that, 
I still will allow myself some latitude and freedom to eat. Like, and when we're traveling, like, I'm not going to stress over it to make sure I get all this or measure my food. I don't need to do that. I'm not fucking competing. But I do appreciate how I feel when I do eat balanced and get what my body needs nutritionally on every day and get my exercise in. And so, I know that when we do those trips and we kind of eat that way, I can feel. Yeah. I can feel lethargic. I can feel kind of tired. I can see I'm not as mentally sharp. And you want to get back to the healthy yeah. process. Yeah. And I and I I know what healthy Adam how I operate. Like healthy Adam like operates at a much higher level, and I want that. You oh know? yeah. It's, you feel good. You radiate. It's it's a totally different thing. Like I I immediately think of like just watching plants. Like when they get water and they get you know proper soil and nutrients and you just see like a complete difference just in the way it looks that's actually a pretty good analogy yeah yeah you normally you suck at those that's i what know we, that's I just, yeah, i've been working that's, on it. that was really, 800 episodes <laughs> 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 yes a step above ramp water yeah. yeah no that was good that was perfect no because yeah. i totally saw you're you right visualize that yeah, well, like cause, how cause good plants look when, when they, they do everything correctly you're, still, you're yeah. still alive and you technically could be semi a healthy plant just because you're under sure. fed for a few days but as soon as you give the right balance they of nutrients, flourish. yeah, they flourish. They the absolutely flourish. Stand no, up right. I, I used to I like that when I used to train clients in person. I it would be funny because you know certain times of the day I would eat, and there were these. There's this couple that I trained. Jessica actually trains them now. Morgan and Kelly, great people. I trained them for I think 12 years, and they would always come in after one of my meals, and sometimes they would show up a little bit early, so they'd walk in and I'd be eating right, and inevitably on my plate I would have either a big plate of steamed broccoli with olive oil and salt or rapini or you know zucchini or something like that and maybe some chicken and morgan would come in and he'd look at me and he'd be like there's no fucking way you enjoy eating that he's like there's no way you enjoy eating that broccoli and i'm like no i really i really like it i like eating i like the way you know i like the way i feel I like the way it tastes and he'd be like there's no way you cuz you're eating a huge bowl of it like that's so gross he's like are you trying to tell me that that broccoli tastes as good as pizza? And I'm like, well, of course not. I'm not talking just about taste, though. Like, if I compare just one signal, which is taste, which makes up one signal that there's a lot of them that, that food provide. But if I just compare one, it's not fair, of course. Yeah. I'm not going to eat a bowl of broccoli. I'm going to want to eat a cupcake or a piece of pizza or a burger or Because those fries. ones yeah. were designed for that. Right, but, but that's my point. Like, if I just compare that one metric... But I'm aware of all these other metrics and, symbol, and, and signals that I get from food, and I value those as well. And so when I add all those up, do I value taste? I, of course I value taste. Who doesn't like something that tastes really good? But all the other ones add up to more, and so I value more of that. And so I actually enjoy eating the bowl of broccoli more mm-hmm. than I enjoy eating some pizza right now right. and i would explain that to him and, and you know he'd be like well that doesn't you know, i don't that doesn't make any sense but it's totally true <laughs> you could i was so funny we'd have like, these debates whatever, about it I'm out of here. but it's literally and i would actually to people who are uh, who were open to it i would actually train them to do this i'd say okay it's and by the way it's, it takes a lot of work because you got to erase a lot of stuff mm-hmm. but it's like before you eat something write down how you feel why you're eating it pay attention to the texture, the taste, pay attention to how you feel, your mood. After you're done, write it down. Later on, write it down again. Really what you're trying to do is become hyper aware of all the things that that food has influenced. And one of them is taste. The other ones are, you know, we've named them before, right? Your skin, your energy, your mood, your digestion. Like we can go down a long your, list. Yeah, your stool, your mental clarity, your Everything. energy, all those all things. Those. And, you, and once you start to, first off, become aware of them, like, oh shit, I do feel better here, 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 and here. Look at my skin here, here, here. And you start to become aware of them. Now mentally, you that now is like uh, it's like points for that food yeah. that's getting plugged in, and believe me, you will at some point figure out that for the most part that I value this food more than this food, even though that one tastes better. So for the most part, that's actually what I want to eat. When you get to that place, eating healthy is not a diet. Yeah. Right, it's actually what you want to do, and then it's not hard at all. Mm-hmm. And and again, you can do this with foods that you don't. That, that maybe taste phenomenal, but don't have all those other points. Well, right. some, sometimes you just want to taste it. Like right. sometimes you don't care about that. And it, right. usually it's with other people. And what's great about that too is when you get into where taste is like, well, yeah, occasionally I want something that tastes really like awesome. Like you get that taste that comes at you really quick. And so you don't really tend to eat a lot of it. Because Very you, true. You don't yeah. need it. Yeah. Very true. I got it. I'm like, oh shit, I'm overwhelmed. I don't overeat uh, sweets like I used to. Like back in the day, if I had sweets and I knew I was gonna eat sweets, yeah. I was gonna eat them till I hurt. 
Like, yeah. I was just fucking shutting <laughs> myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I trip belly. out on that right now. Like, we just, uh, so we went to this last weekend. We had the graduation party, and there was this huge cake. I love cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, I love yeah. cake, right? And so I told Katrina before we left, I said, hey, make sure you, you know, cut me a piece of cake. And she's, you know, this is what I love about her. Like, she knows she knows my little thing. And I don't, I mean, I haven't had a cake in, I don't remember, probably the last time you guys saw me buy a cake, which I don't know how many months or what. <laughs> what you bought know. the whole cake? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was about a, maybe that a year ago. Time. That was great. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Classic like, Adam. I like, but that's like my, that's younger me, right? And I'm like, I know I, I could crush those things like by myself. So she cuts me this giant wedge of, of cake. And I did have a, a piece of it, but I remember looking at it and I, I've already been here enough times that I can, I can remember like, if I eat this whole thing, I'm going to be just miserable like now. Like I just can't handle it. Like I used to be able to handle it because it was something that was more regularly in my diet. So I just took like a sliver off. And the other thing that, and it was good. I actually really enjoyed it. It was nice. And, you know, my stomach was all right. You know, uh, it wasn't really, really bad because I think I took a very modest piece and left the rest of it in there. That thing's been sitting in my refrigerator for this whole last week and that would never happen. And it's like just just maybe seven years ago, you know, five seven. And it's years not ago. because you're. It's not because you're like, oh, I can't eat that. No, I don't even want it. Exactly. I don't even want it. Exactly. Like, I, I, it, it fed that that need that I wanted. Like I hadn't had cake in a while. Mm-hmm. It looked like a really good cake. I wanted to try it enough to satisfy that craving or feeling, right? So and I did satisfy it, and I didn't feel the need to revisit it. It wasn't so amazing to me that I needed to have more of it. Where. That would normally trigger an old habit and pattern where I would crush the whole thing. Yep. You know, I've yep. said this before in this podcast. Like that's part of how I started to the for the first step before I even got to where I'm at now was stopping stopping myself from having it in my house mm-hmm. because if it was in my house, like there would become a a weak point where I would want to go have some, and then when I go have some, it would be like, why well, I, I need to finish it all and get it out of the house. Oh yeah, and so I would crush whatever it was, all of it, because the way I look at it is like I'm gonna consume it. Yeah. May as well get it all done right now. I'll mm-hmm. pay for this. Yeah, like I would. I would look over at, with. I would look. You know, back in my early twenties, I'd look at a thing of Oreos, and and if I sat down and started having two, three, or four, I'm like, well, I'm gonna eat this whole fucking Oreo thing in the in this next seven days, anyways. I may as well fucking crush it all right now and then be done with it. And be, <laughs> yeah. you know, what I'm saying like wow. that. Like I would yeah. have those. Yep. I would have yeah. those th- those thoughts in my head, and and I could totally justify it. And there is some truth to that. It's like, well, fuck, I am gonna consume. 15,000. Yeah, what's the difference if I eat all 15,000 now or spread out over it's net it's the same, you know, it's just as bad pretty much for me to do that. So that was how I would justify that. So, you know, there's there's steps to this. There is definitely and, steps and it's, and, and it's like we talked yeah. about in business, create a plan, go through it and be okay with changing it along the way and this is how nutrition works. This is how exercise works. It's the same exact thing. Like you have a plan, go through the workout, be okay with veering off if you have to because you're listening to your body and that's when you get the best that's when you get the best results and you results and you get to enjoy the process the entire time you know right now i'm following uh split right the, our newest program I'm, I'm literally following it to a t and first off i want to say like we wrote that very very well and I'm, I'm doing the program myself and it makes me realize that when i write a program outside of my workout and what i mean by that is a lot of times the way I'll work out is I'll, I'll intuitively I'll construct my workout as I'm working out. Right. Mm-hmm. But with with split, we wrote it. We sat down to write it. And and when you're writing it and you're not working out, your mentality is more objective. My mentality is I'm looking at it from a bird's eye view. My ego's not in it because I'm not working out right now. And I can write it really, really smart. Right. And that's what we did, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm applying the workout and I can already tell as I'm doing, I'm like, well, I want to do this. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm gonna follow it exactly as it's laid out. And I'm just fucking great, phenomenal results. And this is something I wanted to communicate since doing this is like for people who are experienced and who kind of take it for granted, try this. Try taking some time aside while you're not working out. Because while you're working out, if you do it on the whim, sometimes ego gets in and you revert back to your favorite thing or mm-hmm. the, the, area, the one exercise you love to do all the time that gets you the best pump or whatever and you just end up overdoing that. So take time aside, sit down, write it out objectively from a bird's eye view, and then stick to it and be be okay with changing it, but also try to stick to it because you wrote that in that particular state of mind. Right, right. And man, let me tell you, what a, like what a difference! I wouldn't be following I, 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 if I were just to write it myself as I go along. I wouldn't write it. I wouldn't have written it nearly as well. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, there's something. To be, it just it reminds me of talking about the Fitbit and then the food tracking. It's. I can I can keep myself in good shape without that, so I don't depend on it to stay. Like I haven't I haven't tracked my food in uh, probably a year and a half now, maybe longer. 
but there is something about it when I do track and I do, it's just this, it's this whole new level. You start to notice all those things that you pointed out, like the, your, the mental games that you play with yourself and you don't even, you subconsciously play with yourself yeah. and you don't realize it and you do just gravitate to patterns and habits. Mm-hmm. That's just, that's how we're wired. Mm-hmm. So me tracking something or following something to a T like that or tracking like a food tracker or a Fitbit, all these things are just more awareness tools. And it, and I think that, I, I think there's a lot of value to all of them. And I think it was funny that we just talked about this, about the Fitbit, and this is how I feel about it. I feel that that's exactly how how you're explaining how you feel about this program because you are following it to a T. It's not, it's not that you couldn't create a great program or have a great workout or stay in sure, good shape. Sure. It's just that it takes you to another level of awareness because you are getting a bird's eye view and you're also kind of navigating. It's improving my ability to train intuitively. And that's that's how these tools should be used. Right. They, they should be used, improve your awareness, increase your awareness so that you can get better and better and better at yeah. being able to read your body. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, because going through something that's structured like that, you would already feel like if I wanted to do something that like was more comfortable or something I would I would gravitate towards in the gym mm-hmm. it, instead, but now I have to do this, and it's kind of – there's a little bit of static there and I, you know, I, I fight it a bit, but why am I fighting that? And mm-hmm. like, why? So yeah, you have to kind of pay attention to those tendencies that you typically will have going into even lifting. And I definitely have noticed that with food. It's, like, it's funny. It's my favorite program so far yeah. th- th- that I've done. Oh, I, I can't wait to get on it's it. It's my favorite. And I think it's my favorite because I like, you know, I like bodybuilding. I like building, you know, round muscles and all that stuff. I like focusing on isolation stuff sometimes it's just you know what's kind of what i fell in love with and i like strength too don't get me wrong because i and i did but i did maps anabolic for so long because that was the first one that you know like uh, this is a little bit different but it's funny to see my body change because before that i was doing another some other program one that we've we haven't talked about yet but doing this one it's funny watching my body change because oh, it's the look, workout's it's different. looking different here's the thing it's and so I'll, great and i'll just be honest like i i i can look at you guys because I love I love the aesthetic type of training, and I have been for some time now. I can look at your physiques, and I know that the type of training you gravitate yeah, towards. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can, yeah, I can do the same. And yeah. being a guy who's into aesthetic training like that, like I can tell, like when somebody trains differently. Like you, if you're somebody who's more of a power type of lifter mm-hmm. or into like rotational type movements and things like that, versus a guy who loves to de- deadlift and strength train and stay in that five to you know five to six rep range a majority of the time and train the major movements and that's kind of it type of deal. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I I definitely because I've, I've seen the change in my own physique I, when I started hanging out with you guys and I started yeah. I, I started training just the staple barbell lifts like crazy and I saw lots of benefits to it. there was some great benefits and carryover that I got from switching from being this kind of bodybuilder guy to a little bit more of this strength power type of uh, stuff which I, I flirted with but wasn't con- really consistent mm-hmm. with and for the first time ever I became really consistent with that and I remember like looking at my body going, like, it looks different. It's very different the way it's built. And in its own right, it can still look great. It's it's to each their own. This is what's great about that we have this ability to do it. But yeah, no, I, I look at both you guys. And I'm like, dude, I could totally shape your body. It's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I could sculpt your physiques like, to, to look completely different. I feel like you're trying to close us. I know. We want to hire you. Is that your hell <laughs> expensive? <laughs> <that> <laughs> <nice>? <laughs> oh my Don't God. Don't be putting yeah. me in a bikini, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. please put Justin <laughs> in the bikini. You know, the, it's resistance training, it's, it's greatest and most uh, awesome attribute is also the thing that makes it – that is its weakness, its biggest weakness. And that's resistance training is so versatile and so uh, moldable. Literally, there is no structure to it aside from training within particular types of biomechanics and form. Other than that, there is no structure. I can train anybody with weights, All anybody. If, if they can move, I don't care what injury they have, whatever, how tall, short, whatever – we can work with weights and I can mold resistance training to train from everything from maximal strength to crazy endurance to mobility and flexibility. I can do that. I can mold resistance training to do that. But that's also why so many people don't do it because it's not easy. Right. You know, it's complicated. 
It's not get on a treadmill and run or do this thing over and over again or whatever, or follow this class. It's literally, yeah. okay, the sky's the limit. Now we got to construct and design. And which or one is right for me? You know, there's so many different variations of it and different methods out there that are selling you hard on this is the way to do it. And this is why you, I, I tell you, I'm going to tell you something right now. Like the, One of the number one reasons why the, the thing that I, I personally came up with when Doug first said, if you ever have anything that you want to, you know, sell, let me know. And I'm like, it's going to be a workout program. And it's because all the online programs I've, I've ever seen, they don't spend time on that aspect of it, the programming. No, it's, it's all on the other side. It's just, it's just it's here's just a like, hard workout. It's just like supplement companies do with uh, the way flavors and colors. Yeah, it's yeah. all about flavors and it's colors. It's all about yeah. that. That's, yeah. what workout, that's what workout programs are online. It's yeah. all about that. It's like, here's a workout. Here's what's hard. And it's going to make you sweat, and that's it. And well, I remember when we first started the yep. podcast, and when, when we discussed all this, like we obviously we said oh, we're going to put out all this great content, we're going to we're going to focus on value, but at one point we're going to have to monetize. Like, what is it? And we're like, well, I think the best thing that we could do is to do programs because I think ninety percent of the ones I see out there are garbage. I think we're all experts in our own sense of that. We all have different backgrounds, so we'll contribute to great programs. Like. Let's provide fucking dope ass programs that that are just superior than ninety percent of the people that are out, that are putting shit out there mm -hmm. because most of the most popular ones like and don't get me wrong like I'm, I'm that's an overgeneralization to say like all of them are ninety percent but the ones that are most popular typically are this because a lot of the money and a lot of the focus is on the taste the color of it which yeah. in in the fitness space is the look of it that you know what i'm saying or who's doing yeah. it yeah who, exactly. oh it's the good looking oh, dude yeah, or the yeah, whatever yeah. yeah some competitor or something like that that's that's why i did that like i was like i gotta become a competitor so people will pay attention to me and then i can fucking spin it you, on everybody you, do, right? you like, do know that totally that magazines like shape or these these websites when they're getting when they're trying to get a celebrity workout they'll go to the trainer of the celebrity and they'll say all right, give us some exercises that we can put on the thing, and then we'll say it's so and so's workout. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. and, and most of the time, it's not even what they do when they train people, because otherwise that may be boring. Like, oh well, I'm going to show barbell squats and whatever. Yeah. But like, no, 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 show us some different stuff, and it's, it has nothing to do with the actual effectiveness of the routine. And the programs you buy online, or the ones they sell, are like that. And it's terrible. I, I, I would buy them just because it's in my space, and I want to see what people are doing. Yeah. I look at them and be like. Oh, First of all, no, some of them were just insane. Well, I look well, at what, what they turned into. The reason why it was so easy for me to spot was because this is what trainers do inside gyms. Yes, is there, there's this culture. You've got the hardest workout. Yes, the and I was okay. I was just as guilty of this yeah. shit. You know, when I first came on the scene, like that is the culture. You come in and then like who can train their clients the most creative or the hardest. Like yeah. that's that is literally the formula because everybody was measure everyone was dick measuring themselves on who could come up with the hardest workout that the client came back and said, "Oh my god, that was so hard." Like that yeah. was literally the the extent of programming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I definitely am a part of all this problem, which I think motivates us to do what mm -hmm. we do because it is still a problem. It's a problem still in the gyms. You know, I get DMs all the time about this because I haven't been there in such a long time and everyone goes like, no, Adam, it's still like this. You know, so it's still happening in the gyms right now. It's still happening in social media world and all the people, all these big name people are following. You're following these these trainers that they really don't fully understand how to program correctly and they've been they've fallen for this this whole gimmick of throwing all these cre creative yeah. random exercises. Well, the problem together. is the only the only trainers and coaches that I see that actually have good programming are the ones that write programs for uh, like strength athletes. Yeah, or, athletes. Yeah, like like, and that's because that's a competitive market because athletes. They have something to measure. Yes, yeah. they're like, so I, 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 if I followed your program and my PR was, I didn't hit my PR right. even. Like, I'm like, okay, yeah. your shit don't work. Or if I'm if I follow this program so and I, I don't play better on the way. field, or I don't jump mm. higher, I don't All run right. faster. I got injured. That's it. Yeah. But the programs written for the general public are. There is no metric other than will you buy it? Well, they're very make subjective, you sore? right? Because That's you it. have all these different variables there with that. Like if they if they follow a diet really well and they follow a shitty program, what will happen? It's easy so, to get someone to lose. And 10 if it's pounds. not working for you, that's on you. Yeah, right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's I'm awesome. Look at me. Right. It works <laughs> for me. Yes. Like that's how it. All, that's like where the line gets drawn, right? And there. I remember and, what's his name's programs? Uh, Joe. Remember Donnelly oh, when he would show God. us. 50, 50, Mr. Volume. Oh, yeah, dude. 50 something. He'd show us his programs and was so proud of how hard they were. And all of us were like, 
you're you're gonna fry every single person that does this. Yeah, there's nobody, not a, nobody can do this. They're gonna get fried, and I know why you're putting this out because it Shout makes you look out like to about, Joe D. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the mind pump bump there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why we eventually got blocked is because all of his people were coming uh, over. Yeah. I, that's I you know how many people. I think that's exodus. ultimately what pissed them off. I yeah, remember. yeah. That was the that was the because b- people would look at his programs and they'd be like, but mind like, pump. Wait said, a minute. No, yeah. or they would do them and they'd be like, fucking couldn't walk for like a week. You know, and his is like, well, man up. You know what I'm saying? You get to my level. Take more gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take, Take more, more gear. <laughs> You'll recover. Take more gear and eat yeah. more. <laughs> then you can do uh, two hours special of special sauce. Ch- you know, chest. It really works. Workout. Well, you know, this is what's in the, what's happened is you get a lot of models, you know, that, you know, competed and then they get in, on covers of magazines and don't get me wrong. Like these people know how to get themselves in shape. Like they've proven that, yeah. you know, now some of them did it probably by some really crazy methods or by using sure. things or whatever, but to each their own. And no matter what, it takes dedication and discipline and consistency to do whatever they did, but really have no experience with training other people. And if they, they call themselves a coach because they do something virtually online, even if you're coaching 50 to hundred people a month, times five years you're still not touching that many lives and you really ain't really you're not really coaching no you can't be because first of all if you've made it to the level where you have the aesthetics to be popular enough to have hundreds of thousands of followers or to be placed on websites or magazines that is partially yes you probably do put some consistency and some hard work but you also have amazing genetics because i could take a hundred people and give them perfect diet, perfect training, and they'll never look good enough to be, most of them won't be good enough to, to be put on websites and magazines and stuff because there's a genetic component. And then there's also the drugs, let's not forget, you know, on anabolics. And so these people train themselves, who they happen to have these great genetics, who are also on anabolic steroids. And so all of their experience training is in that category. Now, what percentage of the population do you think fits in that category, yeah. right? So they're writing a. They're, what they've done is they've written programs for genetically gifted steroid taking people. Right. Everybody else is fucked. Well, you know anybody what, else who follows that program is not going to respond. What's the same interesting way. is that that the culture hasn't really caught up to the fa- that fact alone that like they don't view getting really big and shredded as like you know it's like a, like professional sport like so say if i was to try like i want to be like a professional basketball player like in the nba you know, like, uh, and I just, all I have to do is, you know, work on my skill set, you know, wear these strength shoes, you know, get stronger, like eat a bunch of supplements and then I can be in the NBA, yeah. you know, Everybody like knows that's now. silly. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's fucking silly. But, but then again, on that side of it, where we see all these magazine, uh, images and people that are just like, you know, man, just genetically just awesome. And like bodybuilders, it's like, for some reason we still think that's achievable. Yeah. I'll yeah. look like him if like, I yeah, yeah, no problem. Part. I just gotta just gotta lift more. No, I mean, look at I, I've hung around with some some crazy, crazy genetic freaks, pro bodybuilders, for example. We hung out with Ben Pikulski. Here's a man who is literally trying to lose weight, to lose muscle, big time. They He's try- trying as hard as he can. He wants to lose a hundred pounds to of lose muscle. muscle. Okay, he was already in this process for like a year where he was pushing to lose muscle. I will never, ever, ever <laughs> get as big working. as he is <laughs> after years of trying to get smaller. So he could literally try to get smaller. I could try to get as big as possible. I will never be as big as him yeah. because he's just- That's silly. He's Now, has he put in a lot of work? Of course. Yeah. But he's also combined that with the ability to put on that kind of muscle. And so my point is with these routines is they're not written- they're not written by people who've trained lots of people. And you can tell when you look at them. When I, I can always take a look at this and be like, oh, this is not written for, this is not going to help most people. This yeah. is going to hurt most people or do nothing. Right. It's terribly written. Right. They don't, they don't, they don't periodize their training. So they don't utilize, you know, understand exercise order and how the order all matches throughout the entire week. They don't understand how to apply intensity or frequency properly, especially in the context of whatever program that they're writing. They don't understand how to combine mobility in the pro- in the right way. They may throw in mobility in there, although I still haven't seen that yet, but let's just say they do. They may just pick three or four popular mobility exercises, yeah. not realizing those need to be programmed. You stretch your hammies, bro. Yeah, those need to be programmed right. as well. And so, you know, it's just a, it was an open it was an open market for 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 that kind of stuff. Oh, it was easy. It was going to be easy if we we knew that if we were going to provide value, add value through the podcast, and then as long as we provided something that was superior than most everything that was being put out there, which is also why too that we can charge the rate that we do for our programs. I mean, I I knew that. I remember I was just telling this to somebody the other day. It's like 
uh, I like to think of ourselves as the the Nordstroms of you know programs <laughs> online. It's mm-hmm. like you know, and, and there's plenty of other nice stores out there and people that do that. But like you're, we have a reputation for the the product that you're getting, and we also have just like Nordstroms, you can get your money back guarantee. It's like I we feel so confident in what we put together for people that's like follow the shit yeah follow this shit and then and get back to it yeah and give- it's not about all the awesome heroic imagery and yeah, like no, how, it sucks. Like, we're getting better right? yeah we get but ready. yeah but I, what i'm saying is like literally all it is about what works and what's going to work for you best like yeah. that was what we put all the emphasis it's, in it's funny christina rice uh always fucking just, <laughs> just she, hammers that, us she's such a little shit because yeah. she's a kid but she's so blunt which I, which is why we like her but she's just like, you need to like reshoot the videos for Maps Anywhere. You know how yeah. she talks? Yeah. yeah. She's like, because uh, it's like in your grandma's living room and it doesn't <laughs> yeah. look, and Adam's wearing sunglasses. Like you guys weren't even trying. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm like, and I'm telling her, I'm like, listen, that'll happen in, in due time and that's going to be something we're going to do. We're going to make everything look better. I said, but the time that we spent on it is on the programming. Like it works. Right. And she's like, yeah, but da da da. And we go back and forth. And then she tried it. And she did that big old post in the forum yeah. where she's like, all right, like, yeah. I know how it looks, but let me tell you, I followed it and it <laughs> totally works. Like, I see my body change yeah. or whatever. So, hey, you know, it, the point at the point when we combine the fucking flavor and, and, and color, yeah. like when we really, when we start to focus on the flavor right. and color with it, right, right. is that's, when I think it'll, that's next it'll year. be a deadly combo. That's next year. I mean, it's all happening right now. It's a, it's a slow process. You know, this uh, is, again, something else that I was talking about with this, this group of people I was talking to yesterday was... You know, it, it takes time to do those things. It takes a lot of money to do those things, but it's not a it's not the number one priority. It really isn't. It is if we wanted to get the attention of everybody, but it's not. I'd rather not get the attention of thousands of people and truly transform five people. Yeah. You truly you get tra- the forward thinkers, the early adopters. Right. You know, we're we're getting people that are actually seeking on that change. You right. know, not just your your fly fly by the moon kind of people. Mm-hmm. Right, and I do see though with the growth of the business and what's happening right now, and I, I think the YouTube channel is approaching eighty thousand subscribers or something right now. Like you're starting to see the looky loos now. Yeah. You know, oh, dude, because we had see. a really strong core for a long time. I was like, man, we don't get bro, any hate, bro. I, I've done a couple <laughs> videos. There's a couple videos now with me Ooh, on them where I'm talking. And you know how I talk? I talk very like like this is how it is, right? And you can there's now getting some haters, and so there's some comments. I forgot which one it was. I think it was the one that was talking about why body part splits don't work for most people and this, that, and the other. Yeah. And I'm talking about, and underneath it, there's a dude that's like, one guy's like. Yeah, I, I do a split and I'm already way bigger than this guy, so he doesn't know what he's talking about. And then another person's like, <laughs> another person's like, the end. Yeah, another yeah. Per- <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See another, you later. Another person's like, my programs yeah, are awesome, dude. You know, I've, I know some female powerlifters that are bigger than this guy. Obviously, <laughs> oh my god, uh, dude. And I'm, I'm laughing. Can we? Can <laughs> we? Brutal. But can, can I tell you something? Can we read uh, like when we start getting these? We have no, because like, you're gonna encourage them. It doesn't matter. Right. It's it doesn't funny. matter. I remember Doug used to say that, and I used to agree like we shouldn't like read like a bad reviewer but but no. at this point it's gonna there's gonna be tons of hate it won't have matter. you seen that i don't know if it's jimmy fallon but they do you know who does it really well the guy that i i followed a long time ago and he's now blown up big time lately is robert frank mm. and he mm. does those crazy videos where he's yelling his car, but he does every week he like he he dances all just ridiculous in his kitchen and he just he posts all the twitter hate yeah. He like oh, literally shouts great. him out. You know what I'm saying? He gives him love. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shouts them all funny. out, and they're just this that's great mean ass shit. People are oh, saying. Oh yeah, and, but it, so they're saying that. But the best part of it is, is I won't answer for a little bit. I'll wait, and inevitably, fan will get on there, and the fan will be like, "Oh, you don't, even, you must not know who who he is, or you don't know who Mind Pump is." Obviously, they know what they're talking about. I'm like, "Oh shit, yeah, <laughs> they're going on there to back well, us and that's, up." And that's what Casey, yeah. Casey will tell you always with us, right? Is don't pick up the brick, right? Don't even, yeah. don't even respond. Don't even give them any attention whatsoever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But some people, I mean, that was part of Joe D's formula. He used to do this. Who else does this that we know, where they intentionally engage engage people like that? Because for Lane the, does it. Yeah, oh, Lane does yeah, it. Yeah, Lane so, will go back. Oh, Lane so and, the, Lane, the functional patterns guy. And you know, it's crazy. Yeah, but he's crazy. When I look yeah. at both their businesses, it's the same thing. You, attra- it's crazy what you attract when you do that. You know, it's your, oh yeah, your, you're if, putting it out there. If this, if podcasting is now the future, like tell like tel- television in a sense, like you're the Ricky Lake and the Maury Povich of fucking yeah. of podcasting. And they did get a lot of views. Of, of, of social media, yeah. yeah. And Yo. they did get a lot of views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It was you, a formula. You attract a different customer though. That's for damn sure. Damn, you know what's funny? If I if I were like a producer, I would like you know. You know how much money you can make with a with an internet talk show where people fight each other like Jerry Springer? Of course. Yeah. All you have to do is mimic it. 
Of course. You know, get some trash Well, on remember, there. we did we did want to do something similar. Remember we talked about this? I would love... We tried to set it up a couple times. We, the beef that was between... Um, oh, we want to do a debate. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want them to fight. Well, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, I mean... Was that, that we was wanted Lane to, Norton and... and um, the Cairo guy. To, DeFranco's friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah I forgot Cairo, his name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We tried to get that together. Like, yeah, that would have been cool. I still think that would be a cool thing to do where we're the moderators of that. And, you know, maybe just one of us does it. And then yeah. you have two of these sure. two of these people that don't like each other that in, that are intelligent. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. value for the cut. It's not I don't want to I could I couldn't I couldn't sleep uh, sleep at night if it was purely for drama. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's bring well, on. Jerry Springer was no there was nobody debating important. Yeah, there was no intelligent. No. There was nothing intelligent coming out of it. Where it was I, like I had sex with my cousin and now she you know, whatever. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. where, where people would eat that shit up too. Like it, big you're time. not the father. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't feel good that. about putting it out there. I would feel good though about having like a, a lane and someone else or a guy that the two polarizing personalities in the fitness space that yeah. don't like each other but then all or both are intelligent and they have that'd be fun own. yeah i think so too that'd be really really fun i think it'll it'll eventually happen yeah, yeah. I, I would love to see that because I, I do want to see that ideas get discussed in that kind of a in that kind of a fashion so somebody could literally watch a video and see don't you think we're a like vegan advocate go against a carnivore diet advocate mm -hmm. and have them go back and forth and and people who can argue their cases really well. I'm not going to pick an idiot and a smart person. No, but don't you think we're, don't you think we're like the right podcasters to host something like that? I would love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I really feel like that we would have a really non biased keep the bias out of it. Yeah, yeah, let's just let's just let them go, and we'll and we'll prod them in the right direction, and, and let the audience like you know. Then you have the audience vote afterwards, like that that one <laughs> monk <laughs> debates. Yeah, like the monk debates. Dude, the way uh, they that vote is, that is really cool. Dude, have you watched that any more of their cool. debates? Yeah. Well, which one did I watch last? What was the one you sent over? Oh, it was the uh, the one about. Uh, religion yeah yeah mm. it's brilliant and what the way what they do that's brilliant is they don't just ask the audience at the end who won the debate what they ask the audience beforehand is what is your current position on this topic so mm. everybody already has it they've already said okay i believe i would love to yes steal, or steal i believe this no. idea exactly like and then the fitness. idea is to yep. see who got swayed more at the end mm. so even though you have an audience of that majority of them support one for guy example anyway. how dope would it be to have lane and like rob wolf and say artificial sweeteners are bad for you yeah our and, artificial sweeteners yeah, safe. And, right and get that from the audience where you where you sit on there yep. and then let those two have and a see who sways yeah that, that would be so yeah, cool is sugar cool. bad for you yeah, or I yeah, do yeah we'll give them the topic and then they just have to discuss it uh, that would be money dude yeah. i know it would be that would be really good i'd like to try and put now that, that it's on air watch everybody yeah. Yeah. i know uh, do that. i know I'm gonna, like don't slide in my dm to let me know that i know yeah, it's a good idea yeah, we already know <laughs> yeah, we thought of this for a long time actually. <laughs> it's, it's on record we now we tried to yeah. put it together we well, did. that's why it's hard. It's hard to coordinate both guys because yeah, everybody's and, busy. And, and then and it, because it's such a new thing that we're doing, like or trying to do. I think that so many people are scared too. Like that's I felt that from when we were trying to get yeah. the, the the last two together, and I was like, Man. well, nobody wants to feel like you know they're going to get attacked or anything. Or like we want to make it as inviting as I, possible. It has to be in front of an audience. I think. I think they, it would be good to get that feedback from an audience. It, it would take a lot of organization. It really would. You'd yeah. film it and then you could put it on. YouTube or whatever, but it would take some some organization for sure. Oh, we're yeah. fucked. Then. Yeah. Anyway, well. well, I tell you what, I'm super super grateful uh, for you guys. I'm extremely grateful for the people that support have supported and listened to Mind Pump and yeah. and supported us by enrolling in our programs and and all that stuff. Like you guys, I, if you've listened to every. 800 episodes like I don't know we should do something for them man that's, well, we that's do, pretty uh, fucking crazy well we can't do anything for well there's depends like that's gonna be tough we could go no. yeah there's a lot of people these days now. I mean yeah. let us know <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, just let us know I'll figure something just out like, by then just like a free t-shirt yeah. for everybody Justin to come over and wash I'm your a, car yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah good one Doug Justin's oh, like that dad man. that promises crazy yeah, shit yeah that's why I'm like I'm son kidding. if you get straight A's uh, I'm gonna buy you a fighter jet you know? yeah he'll never do it yeah. And, yeah. Mom, <laughs> and then he does. Yeah. And mom, oh, shit. Mom's like, you got to get him a fighter jet now if he gives yeah. us shit. Oh, man. Anyway, Open super, my mouth. super, super grateful for all the support and love. And we're going to keep doing what we're doing and more uh, in the years to come. Uh, so. We're going to, we're going to, you know, I think, I know a question that I'm sure people are wondering right now is like, what's in store for us in the future? And there's a lot of cool things that are down the pipe. But I think the thing that I am excited about is just a lot of the stuff that we've done, I think we're going to do a lot better. And this is the part of the business that I know I was kind of putting the, the yeah. reins on a lot of people and being like, relax, we'll get here. We'll mm -hmm. get to that point where we can really dress things up. We can really produce things up. We can really spend some money and some time in these areas because we're in this place now. So 
I'm excited to see a lot of those things unfold. So I like I like what I see happening with Taylor and what we're doing with the whole advertising side and the partnerships and the relationships that we're starting to form and now mm-hmm. these tours that we're going to start doing. Like I think that's a really exciting thing that's going to be totally it's new. It's so fun. Oh, it's going to oh, be fun. Yeah. It's Can't be wait great. till the next one, yeah. man. I love what I see going on right now with Shannon and all the all the stuff that she's designing right now for like the look because for oh, a yeah. very long time we just don't appeal to the masses. I think that the brand right now looks like you got to be kind of a hardcore workout person or mm. super into bodybuilding type of deal to even appeal to the brand that's getting all changed right now so that's going to look so cool. The YouTube channel, I think we're really starting to find like our formula and what works and what people are wanting. I'm super excited about IGTV. Like uh, that's where we're most active on Instagram. And now that they're going to be having their yeah. own TV, I mean, that's... We're going to jump on that's that. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. It's It'll be, be interesting. It's going to be fun. Excellent. Well, check it out. We have, I don't know, like something like 12 free guides that we wrote. Uh, great information. Lots of value. They're absolutely free. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Find one that you like. Download it. Cost you nothing. Also, find us on Instagram. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.